in New Orleans. The Saints and the Redskins in the regular season opener on kickoff weekend in the National Football League. Mike Shanahan, third season as Redskins head coach, Washington 5 and 11 last season. And across the way, he refers to himself as the fill in for the fill in. 45 year old Aaron Fulmer. Remember, Joe Vick, the interim head coach, suspended for the first six games. So Fulmer acting as the head coach for the first time in his career. Will Smith, his suspension was vacated on Friday. Will start for the Saints this afternoon. Jonathan Filma, who a moments ago led the who that chance here in the dome. Saints have won the toss. Billy Cundiff gets things started. And Darren Sproles, who set an NFL record for all purpose yards in one season, will not have an opportunity to bring it out. So Drew Brees and the Saints offense will start from their own 20. Now look at those numbers, and not just last season, but his entire tenure here with the New Orleans Saints, he's just been absolutely amazing. And it was funny talking with Mike Shanahan yesterday and, and him talking about Drew Brees. He goes, you know, sometimes you think that he's a system quarterback and maybe he's not on the level of the Tom Brady or the Peyton Mannings and the Aaron Rodgers. And then when you watch him on film, he says he might be better than all of them. On first down, the pass intended for Marcus Colston as we take you through the Saints offense. A great group up front. They lost Carl Nix, but they did a great job replacing him with Ben Grubbs, Tony. I'll tell you what, and you got two guys here that are coming up right here, Jimmy Graham and also a guy, Darren Sproles. You better know where they're on the field. You better cover those two guys because they're going to big play, big play guys. Unbelievable numbers, dudes, for both Graham and Sproles last season. Here, Thomas in the backfield, second and ten. Off the play fake, Green steps up. Throws and he starts the season 0 for 2. Lance Moore, the intended receiver, D'Angelo Hall, on the coverage. Well, the Redskins defense is going to have uh, their hands full this afternoon. Up front, it's a group, the group in the front seven, but my concern is, is on the back end. Uh, you know, quarterback situation, we'll see what happens there, but it's the safety spot. Brandon. Merriweather is out. Tenard Jackson, who was brought in to possibly be a starter when he was down, is suspended. So, Deshaun Gomes get the start. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes Drew Brees before he tests him deep. Brees on third and ten has the pass batted back by Stephen Bowen. So, the Saints, who went three and out only 23 times last year, fewest in the league, three and out on their opening drive. But when you play New Orleans, you know, one of the things you have to realize is that ball is going to come out quick. You have to get your hands up and clog those throwing lanes, just like they did right there. You'll know when you can't get to Drew Brees, get your hands up. Thomas Morstead punting from his own 10-yard line, forcing Brandon Banks all the way back to the 22. Banks across the 30 and then forced out of bounds by Scott Shanley. So good field position for the reigning Heisman Trophy winner making his regular season debut. Robert Griffin the third, first rookie quarterback to start the opening game of the season for the Redskins since Norm Snead back in 1961. Well, you heard Tony talk about the athletic ability that Robert Griffin the third possesses, but sitting down and talking to him, the character, the intangibles that are there, I mean, he really is the complete package at the quarterback position. Yeah, he really surprised me during warm-ups. The defense will see if they can contain him here today, Dan. The defense including Will Smith in the starting lineup. As Griffin completes his first pass to Pierre Garçon, but Corey White, fifth-round pick out of Sanford, is right there to make the tackle. No gain on the play. Well, this is the group that was the concern coming into training camp. They were in and out of the lineup, didn't get a lot of time to play together as a unit. Tyler Columbus will be your starting right tackle. We'll see how much he is tested. Alfred Morris, a rookie from Florida Atlantic, had a great preseason and gets the start. So, rookie quarterback and a running back to start the season for the Redskins. And on second and ten, the option is Griffin. And he picks up a first down, slides. 
Out to the 44 for a gain of 12. The best thing he does here, Tony, is at the end of the run, he got down to one knee. Yeah, because these guys right here are going to try and put hits on him all day long. And it's really in the running game when they want to get him. They want to pile on, make it tough for him to get off of that pile. Saints went out. Jabari Queer. Their starting left corner replaced by the rookie White. Griffin to Garcon, his second catch is across midfield, the former Colt spent the last four years in Indianapolis, career high 70 receptions a year ago, Redskins have really upgraded at the receiver position. Yeah, Mike Shanahan knew they had to get better on the outside, and one of the guys they went after right away was Pierre Garcon, also Joshua Morgan, so you've got two new guys in. This has become the go-to guy for Robert Griffin III. Targeted him extremely frequently during the course of the preseason. You can already see there's a really good comfort level between these two. So Griffin, two for two, plus a 12-yard run. Gets rid of it quickly. It's Garcon again, his third catch. And he gains nine down to the Saints' 35-yard line. And he's shaken up, so the first three... Passes of Griffin's career have gone to Garcon, but he will head to the sidelines. We'll see what happens here at the end of the catch and run. Holding that wrist forearm area as he goes to the sideline. Couldn't really tell what happened on the tackle. Replaced by Aldrich Robinson. Griffin out of the shotgun, second down and one. Off the fake to Morris, here's Robinson to replace Garcon. And Robinson picks up a first down. He spent last year on the practice squad, had a huge game during the preseason against Chicago when he gained over 100 yards. This is a heck of a catch by Aldrick Robinson because this is one of those bubble screens. You're moving upfield laterally, and that is behind him. That is great hand-to-eye concentration. Get that ball secure, get upfield. Right now, the Washington Redskins are absolutely foregoing the middle of this defense and hitting the Saints on the edges. They want to be out there on the perimeter as they attack. Garcon, as you saw, has returned. New set of downs for the Redskins. This is Morris. You mentioned Darrell, sixth round pick out of Florida Atlantic. Was terrific during the preseason. And you may recall Mike Shanahan once drafted a running back in the same round, the sixth round by the name of Terrell Davis in Denver. Became the key ingredient on those Super Bowl teams out in Denver, and he's a perfect fit for the way that they like to run the football. He's a one-cut-and-go guy. He's going to press the hole in the zone-blocking scheme, and when he sees his alley, he's going to square his shoulders and go north and south, and he is tough to bring down. On second and seven, it's Morris again for a gain of two. You know what, Madero, I really like what this Washington offense is doing. A lot of short passes to the outside, a little bit of runs on the inside. But what they're doing is they're not exposing that offensive line. That's the big question mark. You know, they had some troubles inside with those offensive linemen. But with these short passes, those defensive linemen don't have a chance to go and get a pass rush or bring the pressure on RG3 right now. You know, the other great thing they're doing, Tony, is at the end of the runs on the outside, they are staying in bounds. They are taking time off this clock and keeping Drew Brees and that offense on the sideline. Third down at five. Griffin complete to Brandon Banks, and Banks dives forward for another Redskins first down. I'll tell you what, this is the same play. It looks like over and over again to the left and to the right. You know, they're getting... The receiver's out on the edge. It's the, the, the guys uh, inside, the defensive linemen are going to have to run. And they're really tiring him out a little bit, Daryl. I agree, Tony. If you found something that the defense is struggling to stop, continue to run it until they make that adjustment. Make them change what they want to do and then come back inside and hit it with something where they've left themselves vulnerable. Griffin perfect. Five for five. From the Saints, 19. Griffin down back at the 24-yard line. Scott Shanley along with Broderick Buckley. Loss of five. 
Little bobble right there, ball on the ground. Now, there's some of the poise for a young quarterback, though. He goes down and gets the ball, and the first thing he does when he pops up, his eyes go down the field. He doesn't look for the rush. He has confidence in his ability to be elusive. As soon as he comes up, he's looking downfield, senses the pressure, moves forward. I love how much respect he has right now. Those linebackers are like frozen, trying to stay in front of him. Nobody's really going and giving him a big hole up in the middle of the run. On the 10th play of the drive, Griffin hands off Morris. Takes it down to the 22-yard line, setting up full down and long for the Redskins. This is one of the areas that I really think Robert Griffin III can help out the Washington Redskins offense. They were not very good with red zone touchdown percentage last season. Third down and 13. Redskins must get inside the 10 for a first down. They set up the screen. This is Roy Halou Jr. And he's tackled at the... 18 yard line by Jonathan Casillas, so the Redskins will send out the field goal unit. They're, they're throwing everything at him, Darrell. Double screen. They set up the screen to the right and went and threw back to Griffin. Or Griffin threw back in the uh, you know, screen on the left hand side. So they're pulling out a lot of tricks here trying to keep them off balance. So here's Billy Cundiff signed by the Redskins just prior to the fourth and final preseason game. After he was released by the Ravens, 37-yard attempt from the left hash. Cundiff's first regular season kick as a Redskin is good. And 11-play drive. Griffin, 6 for 6. Added. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Redskins lead 3-0. They kept the Saints offense off the field for seven and a half minutes. That is the biggest thing with that drive. Seven and a half minutes, time of possession. Robert Griffin the third, six for six for 35 yards. Mike Shanahan said he had to find what would make him comfortable, what would get him off to a good start. That screen game onto the perimeter. Great, great idea by Mike Shanahan to get him into this game and comfortable. Once again, no chance for a Sproles return. Drew Brees and the Saints offense. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer of NFL fans. Here we go. Back in New Orleans, just over seven minutes remaining first quarter. Redskins would love to keep this pace. You know, I talked to Jim Hazlitt. He said, you know, our defense is going to have their hands full. We need some help from our offense. They sure helped them out on that opening drive. Here's Pierre Thomas on first down. Out across the 26-yard line. You know, I, I don't think people realize how, how well the Saints ran the ball last season. Three times over 200 yards rushing against Indianapolis, the Giants, and Carolina. And, you know, we all focus on Drew Brees in this explosive passing game, but they can run the ball very effectively as well. Saints empty the backfield on second and four. Brees complete for the tight end, Jimmy Graham, for a Saints first down. As we check in with Kurt Benefee in Los Angeles. Kurt. Well, the first Sunday touchdown of the NFL season goes to the Atlanta Falcons. Julio Jones from Matt Ryan. They're expecting big things from that combo. Eight yards on the score, and the Falcons lead the Chiefs 7-0 midway through the first. Kenny Moose and Goose. All right, thanks, Kurt. Saints will keep a close eye on that score. Reeves with his first completion, hitting Jimmy Graham for 22 yards. And now a handoff to Mark Ingram, the other recent Heisman Trophy winner playing in this game. Ingram winning the Heisman back in 2009. They've got a great group of running backs, and, and they're all going to get their touches. And you, you talk about this explosive offense, but, you know, at one point, you know, just a few days ago, the Saints had seven running backs on their roster. And with the suspensions being lifted and players being added, they had to release Corey Hall, a fullback. But uh, this is a group that, that really believes in running the ball well and, and keeping great football players. Same set up the screen. This is Thomas 
And Pierre Thomas picks up another New Orleans first down. Thomas gained 13. This has got to be a tough play for the defense, Tony. All you want to do is get to Drew Brees, and then you turn around and he's pulled you forward with a screen pass. They do a really nice job of setting up those linemen. They really didn't know what was going on. They brought a little bit of blitz from the outside. But once they set it up, all the linemen see him right there downfield. It's nice to go and run through those big bodies. You're running back. From the 38, the toss to Ingram. He spins. And then he's wrapped up by Adam Carragher. Gained a yard. We talked about the running backs with Thomas and Sproles. Ingram. Chris Ivory not active for today's game. Travaris Cadet is a rookie out of Appalachian State. So the Saints with four running backs and a fullback up on this afternoon's roster. There's Traveris Cadet, number 39, and reminds the Saints a lot of a Darren Sproles type player. Flipbacks on second and nine. Breeze gets it into the hands of Darren Sproles. And there is a late flag, our first flag of the afternoon. After the ball is dead, personal foul, defense, number 24. You're going to see Darren Sproles at the end of the run. Forward progress stop there in an awkward position. I think they threw it on that forearm that he tried to go on. Yeah, well. At his neck. That falls under the classifications of one of the defenseless players, Tony. The running back with forward progress stop. And, and it's and it's not just helmet to helmet. It's helmet, shoulder, and forearm to the head and neck area. So Dijon Gold starting for the injured Brandon Merriweather. Picks up the personal foul. First and ten for the Saints from the Redskins. 20-yard line. Breeze with time. He throws. Jimmy Graham makes the catch for New Orleans. Touchdown and a spike. All right, Tony. What are you going to do? How are you going to defend this guy? I mean, the coverage is not bad. Follow Jimmy Graham, London Fletcher underneath. Safety held over the top. Just the confidence that he's going to go get it. I'll tell you what, he threw a right in the area where he's the only one who can get up that high to go and get the ball. Then you see afterwards him going dunk. I mean, the guy's got jump. Receptions and a Pro Bowl appearance a season ago. His first touchdown here in 2012. 2% or more on car insurance. And by Samsung. The next big thing is here. 7-3 lead for the Saints. Just under four minutes remaining. First quarter here in New Orleans. And for Drew Brees, including the postseason, he has now thrown a touchdown pass in 15 consecutive games, and that breaks the tie with Johnny Unitas. Seems like every week he's doing something else that nobody's done before. It's just amazing to see what he's been able to accomplish in this offense. Pickoff taken out by Brandon Banks. Punch to the right. There's a flag. Banks across the 40, and he's finally forced out of bounds. But there is a penalty marker back at the 22-yard line. Spot of the foul penalty, too. Third and return. Holding. On a return team. Number 52. Three-yard penalty. First down. Keenan Robinson, rookie out of Texas. The guilty Redskin. Breeze to Graham. A familiar sight here in New Orleans. Following the penalty on the return. Well, we saw a lot of screens in that first drive, Darrell. I don't know what we're going to see here. We're going to find out real quick. Robert Griffin the third, six for six on the Redskins' first possession. He fires downfield. He's now seven for seven as Garcon breaks free. Pierre Garcon will not be caught. He 
88 yards to number 88 for the first touchdown of RG3's NFL career. Well, it looks like they didn't go with the screen. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to dink and dunk you on yeah. the opening drive. The second one, we're coming after you to throw a dagger. Suck you right in, and all of a sudden, we're going to go deep. I tell you what. Coming off the right side, an in route. Poor angle by Roman Harper, the safety, gets bumped by his own guy. It becomes a foot race with Patrick Robinson. Pierre Garçon wins that, but wait till you see the throw by Robert Griffin III. So for the Redskins, they keep the Saints offense off the field. A seven and a half minute drive on their first possession. On this one, one play, 88 yards. You can't score that fast. They're going to come right back out on the field. <laughs> can't turn down seven points, so. Redskins back on top. 10-7, 88 yards from Robert Griffin III to that man, Pierre Garçon. Well, we talked about it at the top. You know, the Redskins felt it was important to go out and get some wide receivers. Pierre Garçon, Joshua Morgan, the two guys that they targeted. Pierre Garçon has been huge so far today. Four receptions, 109 yards, and a touchdown for Garçon. This is Sproles. Fights his way through and is down at the 18-yard line. Hear the whistles blowing. Sproles ruled down at the 18. We talked about the throw by Robert Griffin III. Flat-footed, pressure in his face, can't follow through. That, that's fantastic. And he has a great seat in the house to watch the play unfold. And that pressure's from Malcolm Jenkins, the free safety, and that's right where Griffin goes with the ball. I mean, they brought the pressure. Harper was out of out of uh, position a little bit, and the rest is history. And he had the best seat in the house, Goose. So now Greens and the Saints go back to work. Pass intended for Lance Moore. Deshaun Gomes on the coverage. I tell you what, Deshaun Gomes is is off to a good start this afternoon, filling in at the safety spot. You know. A, point that I brought up at the beginning, a concern. I've been impressed with his play up until this point. Very, very tight in coverage. Second season out of Nebraska, started five games a year ago. Ready for shot. Reeves on second and ten. Over the middle, this time it's London Fletcher on the coverage. The fullback, Jed Collins. The intended receiver. What's going on with the Jets and the Bills? Right, thanks, Kurt. A lot of eyes on the Jets during training camp in the preseason. And it's Mark Sanchez who throws the first touchdown pass of this regular season for the Jets. Ball start. Ball start. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty, still third down. One of the challenges that the Saints offense tests the defense with is, is keeping up with their tempo. And, and up until this point, during the course of the game, the three and out to start the game, even that touchdown drive, not a lot of tempo there, and not here on this drive. So used to seeing the Saints very, very up-tempo. They haven't been able to get into that and establish that rhythm. Credit the Redskin defense. Third down at 15, more and efficient. Another false start. Zach Streif, the right tackle. Now, wide receiver Lance Moore. Now, unacceptable to be on the outside and have a penalty called on you for the false start. Back-to-back -back false starts, forcing the Saints back to their eight-yard line. Third down and 20. Reese from the end zone. Throw it into the ground, and the Saints will send out the punting unit. Yeah, I think right there, Tony, that's that's wow. great coaching by Jim Hazlitt, the defensive coordinator of the Redskins, understanding what, what Drew Brees is going to do in this situation. It's going to be a screen to Darren Sproles, but they they see it coming. They anticipate it. London Fletcher almost beats Darren Sproles to the spot. Yeah, he was looking for it. I mean, they knew that it was coming, but a nice job by Drew also to just throw the ball away. He throws it right at his feet, so no one can go and get the ball. He's pumped the ball. And 
play a little defense. And keep in mind, intentional grounding is legal on a busted screen. So no flag. And the Redskins following the punt will have terrific field position and they lead by three. Well, he's off to a heck of a start. That first series with all the screens, Kyle Shanahan and Mike Shanahan doing a good job of creating a game plan to start this with to build his confidence. You look at him, it's 7 for 7, 123 yards and a touchdown. I mean, at the top, I said none of the rookie quarterbacks starting their NFL career had a tougher challenge than Robert Griffin III, and he has played very, very well. Redskins start from the 43-yard line. This is Morris, and he's wrestled down by Cedric Ellis after a short gain. Of the five rookie quarterbacks starting today, Darrell, Griffin is the youngest. In fact, he is the first quarterback in league history born in the 1990s to start a game. Well, he, he's, he's wise beyond his years. He's mature beyond his years, sitting down with him. And we all know about his athletic ability, but the thing that impressed me the most and the thing that I've read about him the most is his character and the intangibles, his natural leadership qualities. They really are evident when you sit down and speak with him. Second down and eight. Again, it's Morris. Morris out to the 48-yard line for a gain of three, setting up third down and five. Always leaning forward, always moving forward. Always seems to, you know, never really getting pushed back in the pile. And I think that's one of the reasons why Alfred Morris was able to get the start today, have that great preseason camp. One of the things that Mike Shanahan always said was you never see him going backwards. Washington Redskins have doubled up the Saints in time of possession. Redskins could not have written a better script so far. Blake Lock winding down, and Griffin calls timeout. Timeout, Washington. First team timeout. So, with a minute 30 remaining in this first quarter, Redskins lead by three. There's offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan. Has to be pleased with what he has witnessed so far today. Coming up on Saturday, the battle for baseball's postseason heats up. Rays head to the Bronx to take on the Yankees. The NL East leading Washington Nationals. Battle the Braves. Tigers take on the Indians. Fox Saturday Baseball returns this week at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Yankees and Orioles tied atop the American League East. Tampa Bay Rays only two back, and what a story the Nationals have been. I'll tell you, the Saints were just unbelievable last year here in the Dome. 8-0, just beating up opponents. I am so impressed by his composure here this afternoon, Tony. Absolutely. Empty backfield right here. And Griffin on third and six. He's close. I'll tell you what, Darrell, Washington has done a great job. I mean, when you come in, you look at the Saints, you want to keep them off balance. And they've done a great job with their game plan coming out in the first series, throwing a lot of short screens, getting into the run, all of a sudden taking one deep, scoring on that. You know, it, it, it's every time they come out, this defense right now doesn't know exactly, you know, what to do or, or what's going on. So I think Washington's doing a great job of doing exactly what everybody tries to do here in the Dome. And they, they, they've been able to do that, Tony, by staying balanced. You know, a couple of those rushes are called runs by Robert Griffin III. But, but I agree, you know, they have kept the Saints defense completely off balance. And, and we talk about halftime adjustments a lot, but, you know, teams are adjusting in between series. Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator for the Saints, you know, okay, the first series, they were, they were getting us on the perimeter, so we got to get that fixed. And then they come out and they hit you with a big play action into an area where you brought pressure. Now they've kind of been mixed here with the run and, and throwing the quarterback in the mix as well. Seems like there's a different game plan for every series that they come out on the field. Decision time for Mike Shanahan, fourth and inches, and it appears he will leave the offense on the field. I like it, because you, you, you want to eliminate possessions by this Saints offense. You don't want to punt. On 
fourth and short. The inside handoff to the fullback, Terrell Young. And with a terrific second effort, Young picks up a Redskins first down. Uh, you said it, Kenny. A great second effort because they have him stopped. Curtis Lofton comes in uh, you know, right, right on the outside, has him. Just can't keep him, keep him wrapped up right there. Boom, he's got him. Right now he needs to go and get the rest of the troops come and take the legs out. But his legs are still on the ground, and that's a no-no. And he goes and gets that first down. Well, a new set of downs for the Redskins. They keep the Saints offense off the field as Mike Shanahan goes for it on fourth and inches. And now Alfred Morris gains a yard down to the 45 as time winds down in this first quarter here in New Orleans. Breeze and the Saints have had the ball for only four minutes, 17 seconds for Robert Griffin the third. A perfect stat line, seven for seven including an 88-yard touchdown catch and run by Pierre Garçon. The one corner in the books with the Redskins leading the Saints 10-7. I see from my quarterback right there and you know sometimes it's Absolutely. it's not motivation by you know the love of winning it's motivation by the hatred of losing and, and I think that that Drew Brees is in that second category and uh, he just wants to get back out on that field he knows they are not in sync right now off the play fake Griffin moving to his left now to the right he throws downfield and the catch is made by Fred Davis at the Saints 19 yard line a 26 yard connection you know we talk about extending the play and this is exactly what we're talking about Robert Griffith goes little play action here comes to the outside he's got pressure on him he doesn't panic but his receivers keep moving they find a spot where they can go and get to where they're open nice little pass I mean, that's tough for that secondary, Darrell. Griffin now 8 for 8. Takes the handoff to Morris. And he's down at the 13-yard line. Johnny Patrick made the tackle gain of 7. I, I agree, Tony. You know, he, he comes out on the boot. He's got Darrell Young open in the flat. I don't know why he didn't take him right away. And what I'm impressed with right now is... Robert Griffin III's arm strength. I mean, he, he's going to make everyone that plays him this year defend the entire field. And when you do that, that opens up the playbook for Mike Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan and what they like to do with misdirection and boot and throwback plays. Morgan in motion, second down and three. Morris. And initially by the former Falcon, Curtis Wofton. Alfred Morris close to another Redskins first down. Just watch him. Every time he gets tackled, he is going forward. He is not being driven back. We got a chance to talk to him before the game, Tony. He seemed pretty relaxed. You know, it didn't seem to be too big for him. He's, he's playing well. He's giving him an option in that backfield in the running game. Smiles there. Who's excited about the start? Third down at one. And Morris picks up a first down. Morris to the six-yard line. He played for Howard Schnellenberger at Florida Atlantic. His team finished 1-11 and 11 last season. And on kickoff weekend, he's the starting running back for the Washington Redskins. And one of the reasons is because he is so physical when he runs. You know, he, he's, he's a tough kid. And here's, that's that's textbook by David Hawthorne, number 57. Just a textbook tackle. The first time we've seen him go backwards today. Another empty backfield here. And Goose, another 10-play drive for the Redskins. First and goal from the six. Griffin throws, and this one is broken up. It's his first incompletion. As Johnny Patrick remains down Johnny Patrick does everything right here on the outside you see him he's gonna turn his guy loose jump the underneath all he's got to do is make that catch and he comes up with a huge turnover down in the red zone he's still down on the field and the Saints are thin at corner 
Jabari Greer is out of the lineup, didn't play today, still trying to come back from that sports hernia through training camp. Saints are thin in the cornerback spot. Swamps of Louisiana, what a start here in New Orleans for the Washington Redskins. As Johnny Patrick is helped off, Redskins without Pierre Garçon. Right foot injury, his return is questionable. Check out the time of possession. Second and goal from the same six. Griffin to the outside. This is Roy Hallou Jr. And he's brought down by Roman Harper after a gain of just one. So the Redskins now facing third and goal from the five-yard line. Roman Harper does a good job getting up, getting this tackle secured. He's got Trent Williams, the big tackle, coming out to kick him out. I don't know if he sensed it, but he got down low. Trent Williams went over the top. He was trying to take him off that tackle. Well done holding on by Roman Harper. Third and goal from the five. Griffin looking at Tony Throws. Touchdown. All trip Robinson. Well, we're talking about... Robert Griffin III a lot, and Pierre Garcon and these receivers that they've brought in. We, we need to start talking about this offensive line. Here comes a blitz by the New Orleans Saints. Good job picking that up. Roy Hulu Jr., part of that group that's giving him the protection. When you can pick everything up, open that pocket up for your quarterback, and get, allow him that extra time, somebody is going to break free from coverage and give you a shot for a touchdown. And now obvious flags as Patrick Robinson winds up deeper than Billy Cundiff. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty will be enforced on the ensuing pickup. There's Aldrick Robinson, his first NHL, NFL reception, and of course, his first career touchdown. Going back in between the pipes, Kenny, with the NHL reference here. You're doing too many games, <laughs> Kenny. Wasn't sure you were catching that. <laughs> Here's Cundiff between the pipes. Well done, Kenny. That's the way to transition. <laughs> so Robert Griffin III with his second touchdown pass. Here are the first half. Redskins lead by 10. For the Redskins, they lead the Saints 17-7. A 12th play, 57-yard drive. Robert Griffin the third now 10 for 11. He's also run for 24 yards. Pundit's kickoff. The flex off the upright. So the Saints will start from their own 20. What a pro debut for Robert Griffin the third here in New Orleans. The second quarter, there's Aaron Cromer, the interim head coach. Going in for Joe Vitt. And a look at Pete Carmichael, the offensive coordinator. As Ingram takes it out to the 25. And remember, after Peyton suffered the leg injuries last year, Sean Peyton, Carmichael took over and had great success calling the plays over the last two-thirds of the season. Put up 62 points against the Indianapolis Colts. So, you know, ironically, actually, that leg injury last year helped prepare them for what they were facing this season. Yellow ready. Yellow ready, yellow ready. Ready. 90 On second down and five. Saints keep it on the ground with Ingram, and this time he is stuffed. As we check in once again with Kurt Manifee, Kurt. Matt Ryan and Julio Jones hooked up in the first quarter. They do so again in the second quarter in Kansas City. This time from 14 yards out. Two scores for Jones, and Atlanta leads the Chiefs. 17-10 in second quarter. Kenny Mason News. All right, thanks very much, Kurt, here in New Orleans. Ten-point lead for the Redskins, and the Saints now facing a third down and five. And the play is blown dead. Bolt start, offense, number 64, five-yard penalty, remains third down. All right, 
One of the, the interesting things that's going to go on here, we know about Drew Brees and how good he is at the line of scrimmage. Here's the other guy he's going to be going to battle with, London Fletcher, number 59. I mean, he is going to anticipate what's going on. He's going to change his defense as well. This is going to be a fun cat and mouse game to watch during the course of the afternoon. Looks like Drew Brees with his cadence with his offensive line is just not in sync. That's the third fall start because for the Saints over their last two series, second time Zach Streif has been flagged. We're down in 10. Brees wrapped up by D'Angelo Hall. Down he goes. This is an overload blitz. You're bringing two. You've only got the running back to protect. He's only going to be able to pick up one of them coming from the left side. Actually right here over the top. Here are your two guys. They cross. Darren Sproles has to take one of them. It frees up the other. They overloaded the protection to the uh, to the side away from the turn. So the Saints go three and out for the third time in four series. What a kick by Morstead. And returned by Banks. Out to the 48-yard line. 59-yard punt, 20 on the return. Well, this Wednesday, are you ready for the new season of the X Factor? Simon Cowell and L.A. Reid are back. Joining them, new judges, Demi Lovato. And the one and only Britney Spears, the X Factor. Don't miss the premiere of the new season this Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, right here on Fox. D'Angelo Hall, who sacked Breeze a moment ago. Redskins still without Garcon, who has gone to the locker room, start from their own 48-yard line. And Griffin is down at the 48. Curtis Lofton the tackle. They didn't show a lot of that during the course of preseason, but you have to anticipate that Washington is going to run some type of option, some type of re-keep. We watched the New Orleans Saints at practice on Friday going over the rules with the linebackers and the defensive ends and how to play that, soft play it, who's responsible for dive, who's responsible for quarterback. Inside handoff to Morris. Alfred Morris into Saints territory before he was tackled by Cedric Ellis. Yeah, those inside tackles, Bunkley and Ellis both doing a good job. Right now, this, the Redskins are running that zone blocking up front. And they're cutting on the backside. So those big guys have got to stay up on their feet in order to secure that run game. I watch it. of a decision by Robert Griffin the third I, I think he has the first down if he tucks it and runs he pulls up makes the throw down the field for a bigger play to Santana Moss during the run blocking the bat for the offense number 29 10-yard penalty placement of the ball still results in a first down Roy Hallou Jr., the running back, with the block in the back. There he is in the backfield. But watch Robert Griffin the third. Roy Hallou Jr. is on the outside. He's going to get covered. But you look at it right there. I think he's got the first down. Definitely right now. He pulls up, resets, and finds a bigger play down the field. Then Hallou gets the block in the back right here. Uh, Tried to pull off, but... Uh, yeah. That judgment call by the officials. I, I don't know. It looked like the intent was to pull off Tony more than to hit him in the back. Yeah, I just can't believe, you know, the, the time of play and how Griffin is just extending the time with these defensive backs. I feel sorry for them, but it seems like the plays go on forever. I mean, 
has really put a lot of pressure on the secondary. The loss gave 32, then the penalty yardage marked off, and now Griffin's pass is incomplete, intended for a diving. Joshua Morgan took a hit from Malcolm Jenkins. This is a challenge right here. Here's your read keep, and then you pull up and you throw play action. Look at Roman Harper, number 41, how far he came up. He's going to be involved in those reads to stop the run. Opens up a huge hole behind to try and fit that ball in. So Morgan to the sidelines after taking that hit from Jenkins. Only the second incompletion for Griffin. Now second and ten. From the Saints 31, off the play fake. Griffin heading for the sidelines. The Griffin out of bounds after a gain of eight. Again, he's making some good decisions, whether to run or throw the ball down the field. During the Chicago game in preseason, the coaches felt like he took too many hits and he needed to get better with his decision making. I, I think he's been very good with that this afternoon. He told us there's a fine line between playing fearless and smart. <laughs> That's a great quote. On third down and two, Griffin does not pick up the first down. Curtis Lofton along with Cameron Jordan. Bring him down. It really challenges you as a defense when you've got to cover dive, and then who's got quarterback? Curtis Lofton, well done, scraping from his inside linebacker position around the outside and being able to get back inside and get on Robert Griffin the third. So Billy Cundiff, the former Saint, who hit from 37 yards out earlier. This will be a 41-yard attempt from the left hash. Cundiff two for two. Redskins have scored on all four possessions. Two touchdowns, two field goals. Well, if you've just joined us, yes, the score is 20 to 7 in favor of the Redskins. Willie Cundiff with his second field goal of the game. And the Saints now face a bigger deficit than they did at home all of last season when they won all eight games during the regular season here at the Dome, averaged 41 points per game, never trailed by more than 10 in a home game last year. They were dominant here inside the Dome. Saints have got three and out on three of their four drives. How about Robert Griffin the third in his pro debut? Two touchdown passes here in the first half. 11 of 13 for 124 yards. And on the other side, Drew Brees just four for ten. Out of sync. They, they haven't been able to establish the up-tempo that they like to play the game. Saints have had the ball for less than seven minutes. As Brees connects with Aaron Sproles, Perry Riley out of LSU made the tackle a gain of five. They've just got to get some positive plays going here. And, and if you've got to throw it short and go, then throw it short and go. But this is what they want to be able to do, and they just have not been able to establish that rhythm. Brees on second and five. Oh, what a catch by Jimmy Graham. London Fletcher's had him twice in coverage. Played it as well as you can play it. And there are two completions. I mean, th there's nothing you can do there. You've got London Fletcher underneath, Medea Williams over the top, and that's just quarterback and tight end making plays that are just special. An 8 of 20 and a Saints first down. Breeze wasn't ready for the snap. Able to get rid of it. It's Graham again. He loses the football. All the down. Jimmy Graham's holding his left wrist right now. He's coming off to get it checked out. 
Gets that ball ripped out right there by London. Throwing on the play is forward progress was stopped. No fumble. Yeah, the trainers are all around Jimmy Graham right now. There you can see him on the sideline. Looks like his left wrist. London Fletcher ripped that ball out. He might have sprained his wrist or something. Turned him enough to come off. You can't challenge forward progress in regards to a fumble either. And forward progress was the ruling on the field. But with the referee's ruling, forward progress was stopped. That cannot be challenged. So Mike Shanahan, it would, if they don't make that ruling and they open the door, he, I think he wants to throw that challenge flag. That ball looks like it's out before his he's down, doesn't it? Though? Yeah, Rolling on the field is forward progress was stopped. Therefore, it is a non-reviewable play. Forward progress is not charged with a timeout. Forward progress can only be challenged when relating to a first down or the goal line. Yeah, I mean, if they would have ruled, you know, down by contact, now you can throw the challenge flag. But once they went with forward progress was stopped, they closed down the review process. So Graham off to the sidelines. Second down and six. This is Ingram, a couple of stutter steps. And he is close to a Saints first down in Redskins territory to the Washington 45. And Graham's coming back in now, guys. What a season last year. 99 receptions, Goose, for Jimmy Graham. Only Wes Welker and Roddy White had more in the entire NFL. The 5 9 yellow ready. Yellow ladies, yellow ladies. Hey, Monday, Monday, Mike 5 9 ready. We ready, my son. Reeves on first down with time. Just to check it down, and there's a penalty marker back in the secondary. What happens with the Saints offense, they like to throw quick or they want to max protect and throw deep. The Redskins knew that. They played this perfect. It was a max protect play. They're trying to take the shot down the field and they had it covered perfect. There's no illegal contact foul on the play. Second down. You're going to see you're going to have a little bit of play action and then Max Protect. Look at everybody in. Jed Collins is going to leak out late right here into the flat, but Drew Brees is looking down this way the whole time. Now on second and ten, the pass is caught by Grant. He just shoves Deshaun Combs out of the way. And takes it to the 39-yard line for a gain of six. I mean, Darrell, that was a nice catch, but after he catches the ball, watch this. Stiff. I mean, he gets himself three or four more yards on that, right on the John Gomes. I think that goes beyond stiff arm. It goes into the pie face. Area. Yeah, that's the next level. That looks like right. something from the Three Stooges right there. <laughs> Explain what that feels like, Deuce. Now, have you ever had whiplash in a car wreck? It's sort of something very similar, Kenny. The grab game six. Now third down and four. Play clock at one. Saints get the snap off. Reeves throws and a catch is made for a first down by Marcus Colston with Cedric Griffin on the coverage. Colston with his fifth thousand yard season in 2011. He gains 14. With trips wide receivers to the left. That means you've got three eligible receivers to your left side. And then you're going to bring in Marcus Colston from the right on a little in route. Opened up that middle of the field for your, your single receiver to the right side. Ready. Ready, side. From the Redskins 25, this is Thomas. Thomas fights his way down to the 22 yard line. As we hit the two minute warning. In New Orleans with the Saints on the move, but they trail 
RG3, and the Washington Redskins by 13. Back in New Orleans, Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Saragusa. Redskins lead the Saints 20 to 7. Two minutes remaining. Second quarter. Second and seven for Drew Brees and the Saints. From the Washington 22. Pump fake. Brees looking. Now he throws. This pass intended for the tight end David Thomas. With Josh Wilson on the coverage. But you can see the, the confidence that Drew Brees has in all of his receivers. There's Dave Thomas, 85, a little wheel route. You, feel like you go to the flat, then you turn up the field. One-on-one -on -one coverage, tight end versus cornerback. But Drew Brees has confidence, whether it's Jimmy Graham or Darren Sproles, it doesn't matter. He gives his guys an opportunity to go up and make a play. It's the 10th play of the drive for the Saints. Third down at seven. Winding down. Saints must get to the 15. As Brees fires, posted and it knocked free. Scramble for the ball and it's knocked out of the end zone. Wow. We are inside two minutes, so this will go up to the booth for a review. Let's see if he completes the whole process. Great route, turns everything around, absolutely. Catch, fumble, out of the back of the end zone, touchback. Colston looked to have possession. It was then knocked free by Cedric Griffin. Jimmy Graham had an opportunity back there to get that ball, but just couldn't get on it. That's a heck of a play by Cedric Griffin because he got turned inside out by Marcus Colston on the route, was able to completely turn around and come in and punch that ball out. Good hustle. And then how about Deshaun Gomes in the end zone yeah, yeah, away from Jimmy Graham? As Tony pointed out, you got six foot seven going after the ball. You think he's going to get it? The previous play is under review. The ruling on the field was a catch in the field of play, fumble, went out of bounds and back of the end zone, resulting in a touchback. So because we are under two minutes, this is a booth review. It was ruled a catch by Marcus Colston on the field before it was knocked loose by Cedric Griffin. There's Marcus Colston, who was ruled to have made a catch, then had the ball knocked loose by Cedric Griffin. Referee David Scott took a look at it. Here's David. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchback. So there was no evidence to turn over the catch. We are joined by our rules analyst, Mike Pereira. Mike, do you agree that this was a catch by Colston? Three-step three, three step process. Did he, did he control the ball? Yes. Did he get both feet down? Yes. Did he make a football move, turning upfield? He did that. That is a catch. You stay with that as a catch. All right, thanks, Mike. So now the Redskins take over. As Griffin goes down back at the 18-yard line. Nothing has gone right for the New Orleans Saints in this first half. Marcus Colston, you know, very surprised to see that ball come out. But let's let's not uh, lose sight of how well the Washington Redskins have played on both sides of the ball. We've talked a lot about Robert Griffin III and what he's done for this offense. But Jim Hazlitt and his defense, when they have had to make stops, have made plays. Second and 12. First carry today for Evan Royster as we head to Los Angeles for a game break with Patrick O'Neill. And Goose. All right, thanks very much, Patrick. Welcome to the NFL on Fox team. Saints have used their first timeout. Stop the clock with 52 seconds remaining. And welcome back to Adrian Peterson. What a, what a great job by him committing to getting back for the opening game of the year. Well, coming up, guys, it's the Visa Halftime Report with Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. Big first half for Julio Jones in Kansas City. And how about Mark Sanchez and the Jets? They lead the Bills 24-7. to 
guys will have highlights, and the Fox Sports Tech will keep you updated with up to the second stats coming up on the Visa halftime report. Third down and four with 52 seconds remaining in the half. Again, it's Royster. Saints use another timeout. Redskins will punt for the first time today. They didn't want to leave much time on that clock, 46 seconds. For Drew Brees and company to have another shot at the end zone. Yeah, that, that, that's an eternity for this Saints offense. But let's go back and look at the other side. Robert Griffin III making his professional debut in what I thought was probably the most difficult situation you could place a rookie quarterback in, and he has played outstanding here in the first half. Two touchdown passes. The first one, 88 yards to Garcon. The longest touchdown pass by an NFL rookie in a season opener since at least 1940. That's how far back we have gone so far. And the one thing I really have been impressed with Robert Griffin III this afternoon is his decision making. When to, when to run, when to throw. South Rocket has his puck blocked. And it will be scooped up. This is shocking to me to see from a Danny Smith coach team. Martell Wilson comes up through the middle. You, you can't allow a guy from the middle three. And he's going to come right from that area, right in there. I mean, that, that's, I don't know what the blocking scheme was up front. But somebody turned Martez Wilson free. Look at that. Hey, right in his face. You want to talk about a dome going from total silence to total electricity. Wilson the block. Romy the touchdown. Hartley the extra point. It's now a six-point game. Uh, don't you wish you would have put a little bit more effort in that last drive? You can never relax against this team. This is just unbelievable. I mean, you've done everything right in the first half. You're inside of a minute. One mental lapse. Turn the guy loose to your punter. And the entire game changes in a matter of seconds. Danny Smith, one of the, one of the better special teams coaches in the NFL. You know he's going to have somebody over there on the sideline. Wanting to know exactly what happened. What were you thinking? How could you turn a guy loose inside the tackle? So by Shannon chatting with the long snapper Nick Sunberg. There's Greg McMahon, the Saints special teams coordinator. These special teams coaches, they break down film, they watch, they watch every single player individually. They find a poor technique or somebody who gets a little bit lazy, a little bit sloppy with what he's doing, and they will attack him. So with 40 seconds remaining in the second quarter, Redskins will take over. There is a flag back at the 35-yard line. Some audio problems for David Scott. Anyone at home that can read lips, please pass it on to everybody else. I think in this situation, you can elect to have it tacked on to the end of the play, or you can re-kick. And the Washington Redskins are going to elect to re-kick hoping that they get an opportunity for the return as opposed to first down and 10 at the 25-yard line. 
I think the advantage definitely goes to the return team in this. I, I think that coverage expends a lot more energy going down the field covering the kick than the return team does setting up for the block. So I think that this is a good decision by the Redskins. Miles Paget back deep along with Brandon Banks. I guess it's a good decision now if they do something good with it, but if they fumble the ball and turn it over, then it would be a bad decision. Hindsight is always 20-20. <laughs> <laughs> And this game is 2014, following the block punt return for a touchdown by Courtney Roby. After the Redskins led by 13. So now Morstead will kick off from the 30. Instead of the usual 35-yard line. And we'll start from their own 20. I don't think a lot of people saw this one coming today. Robert Griffin III making his professional debut, going up arguably the best quarterback, the hottest quarterback in the NFL right now. And, and look at the matchup. Look at the numbers. Some, some fantasy player out there now is extremely happy right now. And some fantasy player is extremely, extremely bummed upset. out. Yeah. <laughs> Griffin is also rushed for 31 yards he will take a knee Redskins will get the ball first in the second half they lead by six and still trying to figure out what happened on that block punt what a first half though for Robert Griffin the third in his professional debut his parents are both from New Orleans he lived for a portion of his childhood about eight blocks from the dome Attended Saints games. His uncle sold popcorn during Saints home games through the years. Well, that was the beauty of it. You know, when you make a homecoming, you usually get hit with a lot of ticket requests, but thank God they had some season tickets already. That's right. He only had to pay for seven. NFL. Kenny Albert, Darrell Johnson, Redskins lead by six. Steve Spagnuolo, Saints defensive coordinator, told us Friday normally when facing a rookie quarterback in his debut, you salivate. Not the case this weekend. He was right. Robert Griffin the third has played outstanding, has made great decisions offensively. They have controlled the ball. Eight minutes more time of possession. Then the Saints keep Drew Brees on the sideline. Defensively, the Redskins have kept them from getting into their up-tempo game. They forced three three and outs in the first half. You could not have scripted a better half if you're Mike Shanahan and the Washington Redskins. And the time of possession a factor right from the start. Redskins first drive seven and a half minutes kept the Saints off the field early. And throughout on the return for Washington. Out to the 23 yard line. Here's your halftime stats. You look at the passing yards we showed you. Robert Griffin III versus Drew Brees. We go to the bottom. The key to the story is down there on the bottom. Eight minutes more time of possession. The Washington Redskins than the New Orleans Saints. And you have to do that. Jim Haslett, the defensive coordinator of the Redskins, said how important it was for his offense to be able to play the way they played in that first half and keep this explosive Saints offense on the sideline. RG3, 11 of 13 of the first half, two touchdown passes. Redskins start from the 23-yard line as Griffin finds his man, Santana Moss. Just, hey, I got a chance to talk with Coach Cromer, uh, you know, ask him a little bit about, you know, these Saints offense and what's going on and what's happening. Why aren't we seeing the normal offense powerhouse that we're used to seeing? And he says, guys, just aren't getting their job done. One and two guys on every play. I says, well, what did you tell the team at halftime? And he said, one thing. Right here. Do your job. And that is the constant message from Sean Payton. And it's the last thing that he told Aaron Cromer before he was getting the suspension. No more contact with the club as Joshua Morgan takes it down to the Saints 42-yard line. And again, Tony, I think you, you were 
correct in the first half when you said it seems like the Redskins are changing up their approach every offensive series. You can see right now all the read keep and all the option style we saw in that first half. The first two plays of the second half are play action based off of those. So everybody in the linebacker level is crowding the line of scrimmage and they're getting the ball over the top into the middle of the field. Now we're seeing that zone block and up front and the run game. Alfred Morris doing a good job of finding holes there. And Morris gains six goose down to the Saints 36 yard line. That zone blocking that Tony's talking about. Look at them all running. They are all running this way. Clearing those lanes and then the backside is going to chop. But I'll tell you what, the defense is doing a great job of staying up on their feet. That's what you have to do on that zone block. And if you're caught on the ground, it gives the running back a lane and he knows exactly where he needs to go and get upfield. On second and four. Penalty marker as Griffin is tackled for a loss of a yard by Malcolm Jenkins. That option's a little 83 offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. That option's a little bit different in the in the in college there, Dell, huh? Guys are a little bit faster. Yeah, well, we talked about his decision making in the first half, and, and this is just not a good decision right there. You know, it, give the pitch. Pitch the ball outside. As you pointed out, Tony, it's different here. That's the backside safety. Malcolm Jenkins coming all the way across the field to put a hit on him. And the hold committed by the tight end, Fred Davis, forces the Redskins back to the 46-yard line. Second down at 14. Put on second and 14. Complete to Fred Davis. Gain of 12. Time for a game. All right, thanks very much, Patrick. Redskins facing a third down and two on their opening possession of the second half. Redskins keep it on the ground with... Roy Hallou Jr. It will depend on the spot. Just little things during the course of the game. We saw Darrell Young on a short yardage situation break a tackle, lunge forward, and get enough yardage for the first down on fourth down. And here, another, it's Roy Hallou Jr. this time with the extra effort that puts him in a position to maybe convert another third down. And there's an area that, that's been key to this game again. If they convert this, that puts them at four for eight, 50% on third down. The Saints are, are two for five. And remember, the Redskins also with a key fourth down conversion yeah. in the first half as well. It looks like they're going to have to make that decision again. Just short. So Mike Shanahan must decide. Are we going for it on fourth and inches or attempting a 50-yard field goal? I like it. I like it. You, you're trying, again, we've, we've talked about how important time of possession is. Also, limiting the possessions of Drew Brees and that New Orleans Saints offense. You do that by converting on third down and being aggressive on fourth down when you have the opportunity. One for one at this point today. Let's see if they can make it two for two. It's Griffin looking downfield. He throws Robinson in the end zone. And it is broken up. There are two flags. Roman Harper on the coverage. Aldrick Robinson with a touchdown earlier. The intended receiver. by going for it on fourth down, but aggressive with the play call. Nate, we got a bootleg out to the right. Cameron Jordan plays it great, puts pressure on Robert Griffin III to make the throw. 
He's going to the end zone. Griffin took another hard hit on the play, and he came up limping. I didn't see the pass interference now. No, I didn't either. He had the arm up on his body, but he didn't use it to push away and create separation. On first and goal, this is Morris, and he dummies in for the touchdown. We talked about those defensive linemen having to stay on their feet. Exactly what they didn't do on this play. Watch these defensive linemen. Watch them. See them all down on the ground? Now there's plenty of lanes because everybody's still moving. All you got to do is pick your lane and go up in there. All you need is one yard. Alfred Morris did a great job of going seeing a lane and going to take it. First NFL touchdown for Alfred Morris following the pass interference call on Roman Harper. Redskins back up by 13. Redskins game 31 after Harper was flagged. And in the sixth round pick, Morris into the end zone. Back in New Orleans where the crowd is stunned. Redskins lead the Saints 27-14. Mike Shanahan for the second time going for it on fourth and one. Pass interference call on Roman Harper leading to the Alfred Morris touchdown. But oh, what a great response by the Washington Redskins. Remember the end of the first half, they give up a block punt for a touchdown. They come out, they're very aggressive the entire drive to start this second half. Yeah, play action passes on the first couple of plays. They go for it on fourth down, and then the fourth down play is an aggressive throw into the end zone. So it's the Redskins by 13 through Breeze and the Saints offense when we come back. Here's Pete Carmichael, the offensive coordinator. Saints have had the ball for only 10 minutes, 59 seconds. Breeze, 10 of 18 in the first half. Not much from Darren Sproles. He's had only one return thanks to the leg of Billy Cundiff. Five touchbacks, only one opportunity for Sproles on returns today. On first and 10, penalty marker. As Breeze was looking for Lance Moore. Another nice play by Dijon Golds. Holding offense, number 85, 10 yard penalty, still first down. That's on to tight end David Thomas. Right here, the guy in motion as he's going back across. Ryan Kerrigan, good pass rusher. Not a whole lot there, but just be smart. You know your quarterback's on the move to the outside. Seventh Saints penalty. Forcing the back ten yards. Three receivers set, first down and 20. As Breeze fires downfield, intended for a diving Colston. No flag. Cedric Griffin. Terrific coverage. Very good coverage by Cedric Griffin. Made the big play with the fumble in the first half against Marcus Colston. I like it when they let him play on the outside like this. Both people are competing for the ball. No I touch agree. fouls. Griffin spent the last six years with the Vikings. Now second down at 20. Four receivers set on second down. Breeze over the middle off the fingertips of Colston. Tony goes back to just do your job. What you talked That's about, it. you know, you got, you got to make that catch. Marcus Colston is one of the more sure-handed guys coming from the inside there. I mean, this ball is put in the perfect spot. Only he can go and catch it. But the defensive back looking back, when he catches this ball, another story wouldn't be looking at third and 20 Two receptions for Colston today Graham leading the way with five Breeze on third down a bit short intended for Debrie Henderson so the Saints for the fourth time today go three and out only 23 
three and outs all season last year. You know, Darrell, you got to go and take your hat off to these defensive backs for the Washington Redskins. I mean, look, there's three people around the ball every time it's thrown. I mean, uh, they're doing a great job of coverage and really making it tough and difficult for Drew Brees to find a receiver. Worse than from his own end zone. Not a terrific kick. Take it at the 34, and then Banks lost it. Pounces on it. So, RG3 and the Redskins will start from their own 35-yard line. Drew Brees and offensive coordinator Pete Carmichael trying to figure out what's going on. You can see there their opening drive in the second half lasted a whopping 34 seconds with those incomplete passes. And they've, they've got to get this sorted out. It's the same story to open the second half as it was in the first half. Washington controlling the clock. Let's get start from their own 36-yard line off the fake to Morris. Griffin sets and throws, and that pass could not be handled by the tight end, Fred Davis. I'll tell you what, one thing that Robert Griffin III really does unbelievably is his fakes. Watch him here on this play action. I mean, I don't know who has the ball. I'm down here on the field watching the game. It's hard for me to go and determine because every time he goes and hands the ball off, he goes and fakes out. And this time he keeps the ball. But you see in the background, all the guys on defense going to go and tackle the guy that he just faked the ball to. And that's part of the problem that uh, he's given this defense. Now second and ten. This time not a fake as Morris bounces off. One tackle, picks up a first down with Griffin leading the way. How about Griffin? He was all the way out in front, doing some terrific blocking for Alfred Morris. Well, I don't know about terrific blocking, but uh, he was out there, Kenny, trying to get in front of somebody. But uh, again, he goes and hands the ball off on the backside. He comes all the way around. He sees Morris bouncing to the outside. And watch, he's going to pop up in your screen. There he is trying to leave, getting some guys way, slow some guys down to give a little bit of lane for Morris and gain some more yards. I, I think that that's a great opportunity to go back to his being smart and being fearless Set. comment. That one, that one might have not fit into the smart category. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Morris gained 18. Now the pitch to Roy Hallou Jr. And he gains a yard down to the 45. Goose getting back to the fakes by Griffin. Do you think back to your playing career, who are some of the quarterbacks that had some of those great fakes that you just talked about with Griffin? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Elway did a lot, a lot of faking, you know, because they ran that same kind of zone blocking up front. He came out the backside. Uh, man, who else? I don't know, man. There was a lot of guys that had some decent fakes, but not as good as I'm seeing today. I mean, I didn't get faked very often. You know, when I'm looking in the backfield, I know where the ball is. When I'm down here, I'm really struggling with this right now. He does such a good job. Here's Morris again. There's a penalty flag. So deja vu for Mike Shanahan with John Elway and now Robert Griffin III. He's a perfect fit for the way he likes to build his offense. And the other part is his arm strength opens up the entire field. And one of the things I always remember John Elway was so good at was that throwback across the field. Holding. Number 78. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still second down. But, but getting back to what Tony's saying about the fakes, it's not it's not only the play action fake when Robert Griffin III is keeping the ball, but so, when he hands it off as well, he still carries out his fake like he has the ball, and that is always pulling a defender with him because you have to respect his ability when he does take that fake. So yeah, even if he doesn't pull a defender with him, he's given his offensive line, you know, a half a second to get to that right spot that they need to for the block to open up a lane. Second down at 19, following the penalty committed by Corey Lichtensteiger. Oh, what a catch by Robinson! And Aldrich Robinson picks up a Redskins first down. Takes it to the Saints' 26-yard line for a gain of 29. Well, Patrick Robinson gambled on this one. He's going to go for the knockdown to get the incomplete, and he misses it. And he has no help behind him. It's Malcolm Jenkins coming from the inside that saves the day for Patrick Robinson. But if you were going to play that aggressive, you better be darn sure that you're going to get a deflection and knock that ball away. Robert Griffin, the third, also put it in a great spot that he couldn't get the ball.
Timeout is taken by the Redskins with the play clock winding down. First game timeout. Early third quarter here in New Orleans. Redskins on the move, leading by 13. Kevin, 14, following the timeout. First and 10, Washington from the Saints. 26 yard line. Alfred Morris. Games three, down to the 23. Morris with his first NFL touchdown earlier in this third quarter. Redskins have been without Pierre Garçon since late in the first quarter following his 88-yard touchdown reception. Just like we saw in the first quarter, Dallas, the offense is chewing up that clock. Oh boy, the double. Second down and seven. It's Morris again, up the middle, for the 18. Cedric Ellis made the tackle. Again, Tony, we got to go back. We got to compliment the offensive line for the Redskins. You know, they, they, they struggled last year through injuries, had eight different starting combinations during the course of 2011. They have Jamal Brown go down, re-injures that hip. Tyler Columbus comes in at right tackle. They don't get an opportunity to spend much of training camp together as a starting unit practicing, and they have done a very good job this afternoon in both the run game and in pass protection. Empty backfield, third down and three. As Griffin's pass is incomplete intended for Davis, Roman Harper defending. And that's really the first time that I have seen somebody come clean to Robert Griffin III on a blitz. Patrick Robinson, really the first time I've seen a Saints defender turn loose to their quarterback. So now Billy Cundiff, who was hit from 37 and 41 yards out. This will be a 37-yard attempt from the left hash. Rocket places it down. Cundiff, in his Redskins debut, is three for three. So the Redskins do something they did not do all of last season. They've scored 30 points. Three for the third, Kyle Shanahan checking out pictures. Redskins have scored on six of their seven drives if you take out the knee that RG3 took at the end of the first half. Three touchdowns, three Cundiff field goals, and Cundiff has also done a terrific job as far as touchbacks are concerned. Keeping the ball out of the hands of Darren Sproles. Sproles from nine yards deep. Penalty marker comes out and Sproles is stopped just shy of the 20. And I think that that's a little bit of frustration in regards to exactly what you were talking about, Kenny. And Billy Cundiff has done such a good job of kicking it deep and forcing Darren Sproles to take a knee that, I mean, nine and a, that was nine and a half yards deep. I was worried that he was going to step on the end line. And then on top of this, you could have a holding penalty, taking them even further back. I mean, he is a weapon in the return game, and they have completely negated him in the kickoff return phase by Billy Cundiff, and the offense has completely negated him in the punt game because they've only had one punt, and that got blocked. During the return, holding on the return team, number 25, 10-yard penalty, first down. Raphael Bush. A lot of 25 Bush jerseys here in New Orleans, but that is not Reggie Bush. That is Raphael Bush signed last week wearing Reggie's old number. Recirculate those things. Bring them out of the. Bring them back out of the pond. You can even put the R on the front of it too. <laughs> so following the penalty, Saints start from their own 10-yard line. Breeze backpedaling. His pass sells out of bounds. But two flags come in. Holston, the intended receiver, and Medea Williams a bit over aggressive. But we keep talking about the inability of the Saints to get into any type of tempo. 
Pass interference, defense, number 41. Penalties enforced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And, and it's usually because their first play of the series is, is never all that great. And they finally get an opportunity through penalty, and, and here they go. They're jumping into the hurry-up, up-tempo style offense, but usually on their first play of each series, it, it's preventing them from getting into this style of offense. Saints have gone three and out four times today. They pick up 15 on the penalty. Here's Pierre Thomas. Breaks free. And it's Williams who finally brings him down, and Medina Williams loses his helmet in the process. Nine yards for Thomas. Good physical running by Pierre Thomas. He was swallowed up by the first tackler. I thought he had a face mask there for one man. Slowed him down the way his head got jerked out, but no flag on the field. You don't get away from London Flesher very often. Pounded it out now, Darrell. Saints forced to use a timeout as Ben Groves was leaning over trying to tie his shoelace. So the Saints burn a timeout. Grubbs ties his shoe, and we head west to Patrick O'Neill. Going to. All right, thanks, Patrick. And Darrell, we spoke to Mike Shanahan yesterday. Redskins, of course, trading three first round picks in addition to a second rounder in order to move up and Shanahan said we did not know who Indianapolis would pick but it was a slam dunk either way with Luck or Griffin for us. Yeah th there was a no law situation moving up into that number two spot but uh, you know, Robert Griffin the third when he played against Chicago in the preseason he didn't have a great day either so Andrew Luck's finding out that that Bears defense is pretty good. Breeze able to get rid of it on second and one as he was wrapped up by Ryan Kerrigan. Uh, great awareness by Drew Brees in the situation. It's able to find an, an eligible guy down the field to just get this ball in that direction and negate a negative play. Stays away from the sack as he tosses it in the vicinity of Colston. Here's Jim Haslett, Redskins defensive coordinator, and the last man other than Sean Payton. He coached the Saints in a regular season game prior to today. And what a job Hazlitt did here in New Orleans. Led the Saints to their first ever postseason win over the defending champion Rams back in the 2000 season. He's played against similar offenses to this New Orleans Saints, and he, and he knows that you can never take your foot off the gas pedal. You always got to stay aggressive with them, limit their possessions. He, uh, he had a lot of respect for him, but he was not intimidated at all with the opportunity today. Breeze on the slant. And a big hit is laid on Devery Henderson. And he remains down. Devery Henderson is going to be coming in from the right side. Dee Williams with the hit on Devery Henderson, who is the senior member of the New Orleans Saints, D'Angelo Hall with a shoulder as well. I think it was probably D'Angelo Hall from the backside into the back of the helmet. Henderson drafted by Jim Haslett back in 2004. And just to clarify, we've talked about a defenseless player on the field and the nine different people who are designated that player and a receiver who hasn't had the opportunity to complete the process of the catch is one of those guys but Devery Henderson did not fit into that category so when that shoulder comes into the back of his helmet there is no personal foul because he is no longer under the protection of a defenseless player at that point. Saw Henderson squeeze his right hand a moment ago. And the big thing is, though, at 30 to 14, Devery Henderson really your, your guy that stretches the field down the field. Your big play threat on that deep ball. That's right. He's averaged over 18 yards per catch over his NFL career.
There's some good news right there. Yes. Great news. And ovation from the fans here in New Orleans for Devery Henderson as we check in with Kurt Menefee for another game break. Kurt. I'm surprised by that one because Buffalo spent a lot of money on defense to get after the quarterback this year with Mark Anderson and uh, defensive end Mario Williams. And I, I'm very, very surprised that a Jets offense that's not known for putting up big points has got 41. Well, if you look at their preseason, I'll tell you what, they were killing them in the New York papers. You know, deciding who's going to be the quarterback. And Sperano taking a lot of pressure. They never scored a touchdown in preseason. Never, never. But they were saving it. Never scored one with Sanchez or Tebow in the game. But a different story today. And here in New Orleans, Saints are flagged for yet another penalty, their ninth. So again, first and 20 for Drew Brees and the Saints. You've seen this script before. Once again under pressure this time from Barry Caulfield and he throws it away. I'll tell you what, those four guys up front are bringing a lot of pressure right in Drew Brees' face. They run a little game here down to the bottom side. Rackpo goes inside. Caulfield comes outside. They're all over him. They're giving him no time at all to just sit in the pocket and pick that secondary apart. See his feet there too, Darryl. You talked about it earlier in the game about how he always had his feet on the ground and ready to throw the ball. Well, they haven't given him enough time to go in for him to set his feet. Breeze just one for six in the second half. On second and 20, another flag as the pass is nearly picked off by Kerrigan. Uh, Drew Breeze needs to thank Darren Sproles on that one because he saved him from an interception. Interception for a touchdown, too. Illegal hand to the face, number 99, defense. That's on Jarvis Jenkins, second-round pick last year who missed his entire rookie season. But you Brees checked Darren Sproles early, and I don't know if he didn't see Ryan Kerrigan out there with him. He could not have because, I mean, there was no reason for him to even try and attempt that throw. And Darren Sproles turns into the defender in that situation and makes a good play to prevent the interception. Jarvis Jenkins, uh, in, th in this situation, a third-down passer, we talked to Jim Hazlitt about him. And, you know, he said as big as he is, wait till you see how athletic he is. So, the guy who was hurt all last season, looking forward to a good 2012. After 42, Thomas tries to pass it to the outside, but D'Angelo Hall right there to wrap him up. I'll tell you what, Stephen Bowen does a great job of getting penetration. There's nowhere for Sproles to run. Those defenders can go and get one or two yards deep in the backfield. It helps so much with the linebackers and causes so many problems for those running backs. That Pierre Thomas on that one, Tony. And we, we've talked about the Washington offensive line. We've got to give that D-line some credit. This is a very good New Orleans Saints offensive line group that they're really, uh, really doing well against. Second down at 11. We approach four minutes remaining, third quarter. Reeves forced to his right. And now he fires downfield for Preston, who makes the catch. With Josh Wilson all over Marcus Colston. Colston with the 25-yard reception. Pressure coming in from the top, forces Drew Brees out to the right. Watch him reset his feet right there. Stops, resets, get into the, gets into the good throwing position, and he gets Marcus Colston coming all the way across the field. Got to give a little shout-out to Jed Collins, their fullback there, Dow. Did a great job of picking two guys up, and they're getting back out to the outside to give Drew time to look down for you. From the 34 on first down, Brees directing traffic. Can't find anyone. Now he does, and it scrolls. Scrolls to the Washington 25-yard line for a gain of nine. Well, it took him a while to get going, but this is what we've expected to see from the Saints offense from the start of the game. And Drew Brees is doing a lot of little things well on this drive that aren't going to show up in a box score. This is excellent right here. Moving out, he's got pressure all around him. 
His vision down the field is remarkable. Darrell, the Saints have had the ball this drive for 4.02. It's their longest possession time-wise in this game. Just over four minutes. Second and one. And there is a flag. Rodeo Williams can't believe it. Lands four. Antenna receiver. Lance Moore coming out of the slot. Pass interference. Defense, number 24. All the way to the side of the foul. Automatic, first down. It's a good call. It was early on. It was earlier than with the point of the catch when DeJon Gomes had the contact. It's not there. It's not on Medea Williams. It was about five yards prior to that, and it was a good call. So it is now first and goal from the eight-yard line for the Saints. And Reeves of that pass deflected. It was intended for Jimmy Graham. There you go, that defensive line doing another nice job of getting their hands up. A lot of balls deflected in this game. Not making it easy for Drew Brees to look downfield to find his receivers. That's second, just frustrating for, second for one for Second one for Stephen Bowen today. Goes, hey, what, he's been doing a great job, Stephen Bowen. Get penetration. He's been a wrecking machine there in the middle of the field. Second and goal from the eight. David Thomas cut down at the four-yard line. Game of the week. Many of you will see the 49ers and the Packers. On third and goal. Sproles, wow, unable to make the catch. Thanks in large part to London Fletcher, the 15 year vet. Yeah, Daryl. Yeah, the, guy, the guy is ageless, Tony. I mean, that, that, is, that is inside out coverage on Darren Sproles. Look at he's right over the center. He recognizes it right off the bat. Goes. He sees Sproles, knows he's going to get the ball. Like a, look at the beeline he takes. And just right there at the same time. Let me tell you something, Sproles is fast. I'll tell you what. Man, that's impressive. He is. London Fletcher is, is a freak. I'm telling you, that guy is unbelievable. There's Garrett Hartley. who missed all of last season. Connects for 21. But the Redskins' defense keeps the Saints out of the end zone. It's a 13-point game with just under two minutes remaining in the third. Some of the fans here are a little bit upset with that decision, but it is a three-possession game. You've got to come away with points. As you pointed out, Kenny, that, that was their longest drive of the day from a time standpoint, and you know, you've got to get something positive out of it. You have not had a whole lot to cheer about offensively during the course of the game. And you know, they've been doing this all afternoon. Aaron Cromer, Pete Carmichael trying to figure out there what's going on. It's not Pete. Uh, but trying to figure out what's happening up front. He's talking with his assistant offensive line coach, Frank Smith, there. Now he's got to turn those duties over to Frank because now Frank's got to go back and meet with the offensive lineman, and then Coach Cromer's got to be ready to, to be ready to go when the defense goes out on the field. And you know the Saints fans here at the Dome and, and the viewers wondering whether or not things would be different today with Sean Payton at the helm. Well, it's going to create a ton of speculation if the game continues to finish the way it has gone up until this point. And, you know, we talked about it at the top. I do believe that everything that was coming out of New Orleans about the plan that Sean Payton put in place in April before his suspension started, the culture and the system that he has here that he's established over his, his six years here, I, I believe in all that, but you can't replace the man. I mean, Sean Payton on the sideline, his aggressive style of calling plays, and then, you know, I go back to what Drew Brees said. He has a knack for calling the right thing at the right time, and that's a gift. Not everybody has that, and Sean Payton definitely has that. He's, he's excellent from the 20-yard line. What a day, Daryl, for Robert Griffin the third. Well, let's go back through Terry's. There's his number one. Here's Russell Wilson as number two. There's his number three, Robert Griffin, who may be stealing the show right now. We had Ryan Tannehill at four. 
and then we had Brandon Whedon at five. So Terry said he was going to have the opportunity to go back and take a look at that. We'll see if Robert Griffin III moves up on his next ranking. But I, you know, I, had, I was wrong too, Terry. You know, I, I really thought that he would struggle in this environment today. And if you saw Tony Circle right there, the only one of the rookies playing at this time right now that doesn't have an interception. Zero interceptions. Now the other three have combined for eight picks. Griffin fires downfield, and it is nearly intercepted by Patrick Robinson. Did we jinx him? Almost threw the whammy <laughs> on him right there, D. <laughs> this is just a great athletic play by Patrick Robinson. Good timing, goes up at the highest point to try and get that ball. I really thought if it was going to happen, it was going to be Aldrick Robinson running down the sideline with another long touchdown catch. Very athletic by Patrick Robinson. First time all game, Griffin has thrown two straight incompletions. Morris cuts to the outside, turns the corner, and it is forced out of bounds by the former Seahawk, David Hawthorne, after the gate of five. And what, uh, what a great security blanket for one rookie, Robert Griffin III, to be able to count on another rookie, Alfred Morris, to be able to get you five yards on second and ten and put you back into a favorable spot on third down. Morris out, Kalu in. Third down and five, Griffin to the outside, and it's Patrick Robinson once again making the play, stepping in front of Aldrick Robinson. He undercut it, but did he make a play on the ball? It looked like he just kind of gave him a flyby out there. Now remember the only time the Redskins have punted, Rocca had it blocked, and it was Martez Wilson coming again. Now there is a flag as Sproles calls for a fair catch at the 28-yard line. Good job by Cedric Griffin on that. As your gunner on the outside, one of those two guys that covers the punts beat his blocking and was right there to force the fair catch by Darren Sproles. Danny Smith, Redskins special teams coach, along with Mike Shanahan, chatting with referee David Scott. The call is for 12 men on the field. The last man was going off, making a live ball foul. We're seeing if the five-yard penalty results in a first down. Wow. What a huge mistake by the, state, by the Saints, if that's true. Nothing worse, Tony, than when your defense goes out, forces yeah. the punt, and then by penalty, the offense comes back on the field. You That's see it. There it is off to the right. How about that? He's jogging. He's jogging at the time. He's not even in a full sprint. That, oh, that is unacceptable. I mean, you're the 12th man on the field, and there's not a sense of urgency getting off. Well, the player leaving the field must be completely out of bounds to be considered off the field. And if that 12 player is not in formation, as David Scott said, it is a live ball foul. The penalty is enforced after the play, and it results in a Redskins first down. From the 30, Morris stumbles, and it gains a couple. Well, when you're the 12th man, when you have made the mistake of being on the field when you're not supposed to, I mean, everybody from the sideline is always screaming at you to get off, and there was just, there was not a sense of urgency. At all. On the part of the Saints player to get off the field. I mean, he was only about, what, Tony, about five yards from yeah, the sideline? Yeah. We'll hear about that on Monday, I'll tell you that. So a huge special teams play 
for the Saints on the Redskins first punt. And then a huge mistake on the Redskins second punt. Redskins keep possession now second and eight. Couple of nice cuts by Morris and then he spins and picks up a first down. Alfred Morris gains 11 and that should take us to the end of the third quarter here in New Orleans with the Redskins leading the Saints by 13. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Redskins have scored 10 each quarter. They lead the Saints by 13 as we begin play here in the fourth with number 10, Robert Griffin III, making his professional debut. Lance prior to the snap. Bolt start. Offense, number 71, five-yard penalty, still first down. Left tackle, Trent Williams. Well, they've done a really good job of being able to come in to one of the more difficult environments, maybe one of the most difficult environments in the NFL, and, and have played pretty mistake-free offensively with their cadence, not... Not a lot of false starts, the, the, the type of plays you would expect that this crowd to have caused during this game. From the 38 draw, and Alfred Morris with a terrific second and third effort takes it all the way up to the 48-yard line for a gain of 10. I mean, coming into this environment, you know, with a rookie quarterback, I mean, this is something you, you never would have expected to see. I mean, they were 8-0 at home last year. They, they were dominant. You can see right there, only a little over 60 minutes trailed the entire season, 36 minutes today. And they're already, as Kenny pointed out earlier in the game, have faced their largest deficit at home, surpassing last year's 10 points. And they averaged 41 points here at home in those eight games last season. Second and five, it's Morris, and Alfred Morris picks up a first down and more. There is a flag back at the 45-yard line. Morris gaining 17 yards. Holding, offense, number 78. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Second time, Corey Lichtensteiger has been penalized today. One of the keys to that offensive line coming back from an ACL from last season actually had a, a scope during the preseason, so missed all the preseason games. So this is his first go around out here. But one of the key cogs if that offensive line is is going to be effective this season, and they sure have been this afternoon. That was the big question mark for this team, the offensive line. Could they go and give RG3 enough time? Could they go and you know get to that second level? We've seen it all today, Darrell. Second down and eight, off the fake to Halou. Griffin checks it down, and Roy Halou Jr. has a first down. Here's your fakes again, Tony. What you talked about earlier, great yep, play fake yep. here, just pulls everybody up, and somebody loses Roy Halou Jr. in the flat. David Hawthorne is coming up to stuff the run, and all of a sudden, Roy Hallou Jr. is running past him out to the flat. Yeah, it looks like he got spun up and just lost where he was. Roman Harper had to come out. Find him. On the Saints 34, Morris back in. Morris wrapped up by Cameron Jordan. Gains a yard down to the 33. Redskins again taking time off the clock. Saints have had the ball for under 17 minutes. That defense for the Redskins is getting a lot of rest. Fletcher over there, all those guys, those defensive linemen, get a lot of time, go relax, figure things out, come back in here and get it done. Second down and eight. Mr. 
Davis down to the 32-yard line. Curtis Lofton made the tackle. Now you wonder how many times, the, you know, the, that first drive, Tony, when they jumped on the perimeter with the screen game and had like a 10-play drive to open up the game, when they were running the defense from sideline to sideline, you wonder if that was part of Mike Shanahan's plan. Inside, in here, get those defensive guys tired out. And, you know, now all of a sudden you start sustaining long drives. They, they have left this Saints defense on the field for much of the afternoon. Yeah, especially when they run camps now. It's not like everybody's in the best of shape. So that defense alive. Four flags, third down and eight. Taken down to the 28-yard line by... 12-year vet Santana Moss. Hey, Will Montgomery does a great job. Cameron Jordan jumps off sides. He knows that he's in the neutral zone, snaps the ball, gets a free play. Offside. Defense. Defensive tackle. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. We talked about John Elway, Darrell, earlier about the things that he did with the fakes that's another thing the cadence he used to go and get guys to jump off sides and every time his receivers knew let's go run straight down the field on a nine round let's take a shot down the field and nine he did it a lot of times he went and scored huge touchdowns with just using the cadence empty backfield third down and three Griffin moving to his right Looking downfield, and then throws it away. Might have thrown it to the same spot that Robert Griffin III did there. Santana Moss turned and went deep. Usually when you're shallow and you turn deep, you stay deep. Santana Moss coming off the edge there. Watch him going out to the right. He's going to hook there. He's shallow, so as he turns to go deep, I would have expected him to, to continue that, and he stops and breaks out of that. They're lucky they didn't have an interception turnover right there with the miscommunication. So here's Billy Cundiff, three for three today. He's connected on a field goal in each of the first three quarters. This a 45-yard attempt from the left hash. Cundiff now four for four as the Redskins extend their lead in New Orleans. Well, we've shown you what the Saints were able to do last season. This is such a tough place to play. Now, there's Jonathan Vilma right there. Now, he and Will Smith had their suspensions vacated, and they are here. Will Smith has been playing. Jonathan Vilma has a special exemption from the commissioner to be on the roster. But these, this is just a temporary situation that they're going to have to work through. It has not been resolved yet, but I really expected the fact that there's been so much publicity about that during the year that this place would be much louder during the course of the afternoon. Gets locked now on a big return by Darren Sproles. Down to the 38-yard line. So terrific field position for Breeze and the Saints. Vilma can only watch. Redskins rookie safety. Seventh-round pick out of Iowa. Injured on the last return. Redskins leading the Saints 33-17. Just under... 11 minutes remaining. And unfortunately, Kenny, they're going to bring out the cart, which is never a good sign when you're checking somebody's lower leg. Bernstein making his NFL regular season debut today here in New Orleans. Bernstein. Well, the good news is today what, what the players are able to come back from. We've got Corey Lichtensteiger in this game that came back from a big knee injury last season. We've seen Adrian Peterson back, who was injured late in the season last year and really committed himself to making sure he was here for the opener. So I'm amazed what the medical staffs and the, the trainers do nowadays in the NFL. So the Redskins medical staff tending to Bernstein. We check in. Uh, the Lions and the Rams with Pat. One shocker. I, 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 would, I would think right now everybody's seeing our score come across. 
Washington 33 New Orleans 17 very shocked at that one. I'm I'm, I'm shocked by St. Louis 20 Detroit 20 late in the fourth as well. I hope for the Lions this season coming off that playoff appearance of course Rams head coach the last three seasons with Steve Spagnuolo now the defensive coordinator here in New Orleans. Placed by Jeff Fisher, longtime head coach with the Tennessee Titans. So again, this is Jordan Bernstein, Redskins seventh round pick out of Iowa, who will be wheeled off. And we remind you that. Coming up on Saturday, it's another great week of college football action here on Fox. Aaron Andrews, Eddie George, and Joey Harrington get things started with the Fox College Saturday pregame show. Then Heisman Trophy frontrunner Matt Barkley and second-ranked USC head to Palo Alto for their toughest test yet as they take on 21st-ranked Stanford in the Pac-12 opener for both teams. Fox College football begins Saturday at 7 Eastern for Pacific. Jordan Bernstein off to the Redskins locker room. Gives a thumbs up to the crowd. We mentioned Matt Barkley, two of the last three Heisman Trophy winners in this game. There's one, Robert Griffin the third, Mark Ingram on the other side. What a debut for Griffin. He's 16 of 23, 279 yards and two touchdowns. He's also run for 30 yards. Now the Redskins lead by 16. <laughs> so now Drew Brees and the Saints go back to work. First and 10 from their own. 49-yard line. On first down, pass for Breeze is short. Intended for Joseph Morgan. As we welcome those of you who were watching the Falcons and the Chiefs, a 40-24 victory for Atlanta. Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston. And Tony Saragusa here in New Orleans, where the Washington Redskins, in the pro debut of Robert Griffin III, lead the New Orleans Saints by 16. Early fourth quarter. Breeze on second down. Over the middle, and it's bobbled and dropped by Morgan. And for those of you joining us, that's been kind of what the day has been like. Mistakes by the Saints. We've got a penalty down. We've got a drop ball. Washington Redskins have absolutely controlled the flow of this game from the start. Holy offense, number 73. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Jari Evans, that is the 12th Saints penalty. There's RG3. What a start in the first quarter. What a day. They started the first quarter with a screen game on the perimeter, went all the way down the field, kicked the field goal. The next series, he hits an 88-yard touchdown pass. They, they just have been... Outstanding offensively and defensively. One miscue today, they had a punt block for a touchdown. Brees on second and 20. It's Ryan Kerrigan with the second Redskins sack. They've been putting pressure on Drew Brees all day from the middle, from the outside. Watch Kerrigan here on the outside. Goes, gets a nice rip move, comes through. Nowhere for Brees to go. Those two tackles inside have been doing a good job of getting a lot of push, a lot of pressure staying in front of him in his, in his passing lanes. They've tipped balls today. They've, they've done everything to disrupt this offense, and they've done a great job at it. Loss of six on the Kerrigan sack. Now third down and 26. Saints must get to midfield for a first down as Breeze airs it out. Looking for Marcus Colston. Josh Wilson remains down. He had the coverage. Wilson. 
That's, this is just a jump ball situation. We, we've seen Drew Brees and the confidence that he has with his receivers. Marcus Colston on the outside. Josh Wilson, tight man-to-man -man coverage. But he's just going to put it up and see if Marcus Colston can go up and make a great catch and get a first down. These are the catches that you used to see. Last year we saw the Saints make. So the Saints go three and out for the fifth time, matching their season high from last year in a game against Chicago. We welcome those of you who have joined us here in New Orleans where the Redskins lead the Saints by 16. This is number 16, Brandon Banks, on the return for Washington. And he's tackled just shy of the 25. The ball comes loose. And the Redskins have recovered. It is Chris Wilson on the recovery for Washington. Well, we felt that Robert Griffin III had the toughest environment to make his rookie debut, but he has proven us wrong. Here's an 88-yard touchdown pass to Pierre Garçon. Aldrich Robinson later in the first half, and he has been efficient. He has made really, really good decisions all day long, whether to run, whether to throw. He's pulled up a couple times when he had positive yards to gain and made bigger plays throwing the ball down the field. He's also run for 30 yards. He's played with Man. six points. Man. And the Redskins lead to the season opener by 16 as Griffin hands it off to another rookie, Alfred Morris. And, and Darrell, you've talked about the environment. Saints were 8 0 here at home last season. Such a tough place to play. But uh, Griffin has come in. His parents are from New Orleans, lived here for a portion of his childhood, and he's made it look easy. He really has. And, and I can't tell you how difficult this place is to play. When I played in, uh, in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys, we played down here. It's, it's very difficult. And as dominant as the Saints were last year, and then to have Will Smith and Jonathan Vilma in the, in the dome earlier today, having their suspensions vacated temporarily, this place was set to just explode. And, and you wondered how he would respond to all that. And, and he has been fantastic all afternoon. I'll tell you what, when I saw Robert Griffin in warm-up style, I was impressed. The way he can go and scramble, move, I'll tell you what, his speed, but I'll tell you what, they did a great job, I think, offensively with the game plan. Coming out, throwing the screens, keeping that defense for the, for the New Orleans Saints off balance all day. We saw him going through a deep ball, short ball, scramble. But the one thing that I think makes him who he is is the way he goes and performs his fakes. And we pointed that out in the third quarter. After every time he hands the ball off, no matter what he's doing, he makes believe like he has the ball and he draws a lot of those linebackers, a lot of those defensive linemen. He stutters them, he stops them for one second, and now the offensive line can get to that second level and get on a linebacker where they can get the blocks that they need to up front. And he has helped the whole team with those fakes. Rocker has trouble with the snap. Now Rocker will punt it away. So he gets the punt off. And it will bounce inside the 20. And is down by Richard Crawford at the 18. So a nice recovery by the former Australian Bulls football star, Savraka. And guess what? Another flag. Yeah, in, in, in that situation, we've got to have an ineligible downfield. We just have to. Yeah. Half the team was down. Yeah, but I tell you what, in, in, <laughs> fairness, in fairness to our guys, that flag came out really, really late. Down where they down the football. So, I, but the, the, the biggest thing is that timing is, is so precise. I mean, the ball snapped to the punter. In, in your head, you have a mental clock of when you can release downfield. And when you have anything go wrong with the mechanics, you've got guys down the field. And there had to be at least six or seven guys down the field early on that one. I enjoyed the music during the replay of that. Come on. Yeah, it might be something we could use later in the season. Music to decide a penalty by. There's Aaron Cromer, the interim head coach here in New Orleans. David Scott, our referee. It's been a busy day for this crew. 23 penalties on the play. An eligible man downfield. 
on the kicking team, Pick number, number 51. That penalty is declined. Illegal touching by the kicking team. That penalty is accepted. Replay, fourth down. So two penalties on the punt as we check in with our NFL rules analyst in Los Angeles, Mike Pereira. What did you see on that last play on the punt? Well, you saw that there was nine guys downfield, so <laughs> that, that much I knew you had. And then what you ended up getting here is you get the illegal touch by the kicking team number 39, who apparently went out of bounds. You know, you can tack this on to the dead ball spot. You could take the uh, you could take the ineligibles downfield and tack it on, but they chose not to. They chose to back them up five yards and let them punt again. And they'd like to give Sproles a chance to return this one, Mike. And he takes it out to 37. Spins. And it's down at the, the 42. Return of only five yards by Darren Sproles. It's a two-possession game. Another chance here for Breeze and the New Orleans offense. When you go further. Back in New Orleans, the home of Super Bowl 47, 148 days away. It is kickoff weekend. Saints hope to be the first team to ever play in a Super Bowl in their home stadium. The trail the Redskins today by 16, and there is number 16, Lance Moore, making the catch in Redskins territory. 12 yards on a Saints first down. You know, Tony, we talk and talk and talk about how well the Redskins have played, but there's over seven minutes to go, and this is really a two-possession game with two touchdowns and two two-point conversions, and they, they cannot rest right now. They cannot ease up. Marcus Colston makes the catch for another Saints first down. Their coach has got to be saying on the sideline, we need to finish. And that's one thing that the Redskins have really struggled with over the last couple of years. They got to finish this game out all the way, Darrell. You're 100% correct. And down the stretch last season, you know, they, they were in a lot of those games in the fourth quarter, but, but couldn't close them out and went 2-5 yeah. and five down the stretch. Raves over the middle. It's headed for Jimmy Graham. And Jim Haslett, the Redskins defensive coordinator, won't fall for the same trick twice. When he was with the Rams, they came into New Orleans, had a big lead, and nearly blew it. Yeah, I mean, you, you can never relax, and that's the pressure that this team puts on you. There's that coverage we have seen all afternoon, and we've seen Jimmy Graham and Drew Brees get the better of it. London Fletcher underneath, Medea Williams over the top. That time, the Redskins play it perfectly. The ball comes in, Medea with a good hit right as the ball arrives to knock it loose. Second and 10 from the Redskins, 33. Breeze pulls it in on second down, then fires one for Morgan in the end zone, and it is broken up. Cedric Griffin makes the play on the second-year receiver who spent last year on injured reserve, Joseph Morgan. He has played really well this afternoon. A couple of big plays, played well in coverage, had the forced fumble on Marcus Colston. And remember, Morgan's in there for Devery Henderson, who was injured earlier in this half. Third down and 10. 98 24. 94. And that pass is broken up. We heard Breeze yell out 98 and 24. 98 is Brian Arakpo, and he makes the play. Makes the play, but he should have had an interception. That ball was thrown right in his hands. Watch Brian Arakpo right here. He drops, turns his back. When he turns around, boom! The ball is right there. <laughs> uh, he tried, though, Daryl. You got two hands on it. <laughs> Goose, I know another number 98 who would have caught yeah. that one. Uh, like, like, let me tell you something. My hands are like a, like a, a gecko, man. I would have stuck right to that thing. Now on fourth down, here is Breeze firing to the end zone. Fourth and ten. And that, that is what this team is all about. You hold them on three downs, you force them into a fourth and ten situation. 
And Medea Williams got caught watching. I mean, he was flat-footed at the safety position. He turns to run, and then it ends up being a little bit underthrown, but he has to take his eyes off it. Watch him sit right here. 41, as he's right there, he's waiting. He goes beyond, and, but he has to turn his back and lose his sight of the ball. So now the safe will go for true. Try and make it a one-possession game, and Sproles is in. So the Washington lead is cut to eight points with 6-19 remaining. Yeah, there he is. He's, oh, gosh, I've seen this before. Finish, 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 finish. But, you know, hey, Tony, like you said before, with the Brian Arakpo play, I mean, he does everything right. It's a, it's a blitz coming from the left. He's going to drop off into coverage. You heard Drew designate him as one of the guys who was supposed to be picked up, so it was a good scheme to fake him out. So he's not going to realize that he's dropped back into that zone coverage. All he's got to do is finish that play with the interception. Missed opportunities, little ones during the course of a game that have a huge impact on the outcome. There's an eight-point swing right there if Brian Arakpo pulls in that interception. You know, we just saw, uh, you just saw uh, London Fletcher up there. I know he's on the sideline right now. Found his defense. Guys, we got to close this game out. we got to finish it off. Let's finish it. Stick with your guys. We played too hard for three and a half quarters to let this thing slide away from us. Sam, he's talking to all the guys over there. That's the leader of your defense. Welcome to those of you who have been watching the Lions and the Rams. A 27-23 victory for Detroit. Here in New Orleans, it's an eight-point game. Kenny Albert, Darrell Johnston, and Tony Saragusa. Saints just scored a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Holds to within eight. So it's 6-19 remaining. Robert Griffin III, who has had an outstanding pro debut, will lead the Redskins offense back out onto the field. And not only Robert Griffin III, but his offensive line has played outstanding this afternoon. It was a question mark all throughout training camp. They've come in, they've blocked well in the run game. Alfred Morris, another rookie, has ran tough, ran physical. The Washington Redskins have controlled the flow of this game all afternoon long. This is really the first time that the crowd here inside the dome has really been up on their feet and been loud. They sense their team one play away from tying this game. But now it's up for the Saints defense. Morris in the backfield, first and ten from the 20-yard line. Griffin over the middle to Aldrick Robinson, who scored a touchdown earlier, gain of 13, and a Redskins first down. Nice job by Aldrick Robinson. He's going to be coming in from the right side. Number 11, watch the hit. He's going to take an in route, driven on by the safety. Malcolm Jenkins gets a good hit on him, but he holds onto the ball. Here's a guy taking advantage of the opportunity. Pierre Garcon with a foot injury early in the game after an 88-yard touchdown reception has been missing since the second quarter. From the 33 on first down, this is Alfred Morris. Another rookie sixth round pick out of Florida Atlantic. Morris out across the 35 yard line. With five and a half remaining, there's Jonathan Vilma, not in uniform. His suspension vacated on Friday. He had been suspended for the entire season. Will Smith, who had been with the club through Sunday, his suspension vacated as well. Started the game and is out on the field right now. See right there, they step on each other's feet. Couldn't be worse timing for a simple little miscue. Exactly. To tell you how loud it is, see how tight that huddle is? Just so they can get the play, they got to be that tight in the huddle. Redskins 
Skins must get to the 43. Third down and 16. Griffin spins away. And he's going to run. Down at the 40. Junior Gallet made the tackle stop. Three yards shy of a first down, so the Redskins forced to punt with four minutes remaining. And this is... Go ahead, Tony. No, he's just a guy you can't go and try and tackle up high. He's got the spin moves, he's got the ball out, he needs a little bit, make sure he has that ball tucked away. But he is an elusive guy, I'll tell you what, he got a lot of more yardage than I thought he was going to get. Puck taken at the 18 by Darren Sproles. Nine-yard return out to the 27 with 3.39 remaining, an eight-point deficit for the six-time Pro Bowler, Drew Brees, and the Wallen Saints. His career, Drew Brees must lead a 73-yard drive, and then the Saints would need to convert on another two-point conversion should they score a touchdown. They trail by eight. They have two timeouts remaining. Remember, they lost one earlier when left guard Ben Grubbs had to tie his shoelace. So the Saints start from their own 27. Scored a touchdown on fourth down on their last possession. Brees with time. And it is kicked off by Deshaun Gomes. Gomes inside the 30. Inside the 20. He's still going. And is finally knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line. First career interception for Deshaun Gomes. Deshaun Gomes has played really, really well today. Brandon Merriweather is out with a knee injury. Tenard Jackson got suspended. Your third safety. Here he is back here. Keep your eyes on him. This is Lance Moore going to the middle of the field. Normally we see Jimmy Graham going to the middle of the field. You wonder if that just sailed a little bit on him or, you know, you, you got caught up in what was happening with your personnel. But Drew Brees has not put up the numbers, but he hasn't made the critical mistake during the course of the game until that last play. So the Redskins take over with 3.23 remaining in the fourth. There's Jonathan Vilma over for a chat with Drew Brees. First and goal from the three for Robert Griffin the third on the Redskins. Alfred Morris. Morris is in for his second touchdown today. What a turnaround. I mean, after the last drive, with New Orleans scoring eight quick points and putting themselves in position for it to be a one-possession game, you have that fear. You know, Washington is just really, they've controlled the flow of the game all afternoon, and you think they're going to let it slip away, but... Not with efforts like this. Look, that, that's Alfred Morris taking on David Hawthorne in the hole and winning that battle. Here's Billy Cundiff. And the Redskins have scored 40 for the first time since the 2005 season under Joe Gibbs in a game against the 49ers. Well, you know, it's funny. We talked to Steve Spagnuolo on Friday, and he's implemented his defense four times and he went back to the last time he did it in New York with the Giants and they gave up 80 points the first two weeks of the season and he's he kind of felt cautious at that point you know do, do I expect too much are they where I think they should be right now or do I need to scale back a little bit and it was a concern of his right now and I wonder I wonder how he thinks right now again 40 points this afternoon I never expected this this afternoon from the Washington Redskins but, I mean, a combination of the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers, 45 by Dallas, 35 by Green Bay, to get to 80 points. And here we are, 40 again here. And the Giants would go on to win the Super Bowl that season, 2007. A great turnaround after those first two weeks, but... 10 points in each and every quarter. And there is number 10, rookie quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner, Robert Griffin III.
10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Tell you what, you got to give your hats off also to Jim Haslam and his defense. His defense played unbelievable today. Tell you what, the secondary with the coverage, the line up front with the pressure they put on, the linebackers, which everyone was talking about, the mismatches, you know, with the tight end. I tell you what, Tony, they, the first thing he's going to say, though, is our defense was the best, or our offense was the best defensive player on the field today. Yeah, absolutely. 37 minutes possession by the Redskins, 19 and a half by the Saints. And that was one of the big things he talked to us about. Listen, we can play great with our players and everything we're doing, but if those, if that offense is allowed to be on the field a long time, we're going to struggle. I tell you, yeah, but Jimmy Graham, and you look at London Fletcher, and everybody was thinking about that mismatch. And if it was a mismatch, and I'll tell you what, London Fletcher came through. Redskins have used their second timeout. Now Cundiff will line it up. What a game for Billy Cundiff. Four for four. He's had four field goals and has really kept the ball out of the hands of Darren Sproles. It's just one of those little things that people aren't going to talk about, but Billy Cundiff on kickoffs, not allowing Darren Sproles to bring it back unless he wants to bring it back from nine yards deep. Which he has done. Not this time. As we head for another game break with Patrick O'Neill. Patrick, we go to... So a big win for the Lions at home. The New Orleans Saints did not lose at home all of last season. Where is that coming from? I have no idea. Out of the shotgun, Breeze on first down. Breeze to the outside to Jimmy Graham. 12 yards to the 32. It's amazing, though. You just you can never have a sense of relaxation if you're on the Redskins defense, even at, at 15, a 15 point lead with 3:13 left. Ray's looking for Colston, and that one is broken up by Josh Wilson. But well, we had a question mark about the secondary coming into the game today. You know, how would the Redskins secondary perform against this high-powered New Orleans Saints offense? And, and as Tony mentioned, they've been outstanding. DeJon Gomes at the safety position has had a heck of a game. They've been very aggressive. Josh Wilson, Cedric Griffin, D'Angelo Hall, everybody. Tight coverage, aggressive to the point of the throw. Brings his Lance Moore for another Saints first down. Out to the 49-yard line. are still under 20 minutes in time of possession. Redskins have possessed the ball for over 37 minutes. Saints just under 20, and that has been a big part of what has developed this afternoon. Yeah, Pete Carmichael and the offense of the New Orleans Saints have, have never really been in, able to get into their rhythm. They love to play up-tempo. They love to challenge you with their formations and their personnel, but because there have been the three and outs and really not a lot of great plays on first down to be able to get into that rhythm, they've just been out of sync all afternoon. Saints have gone three and out five times today. Breeze over the middle looking for Graham, and he took a hard hit. Two flags, but Dio Williams now a third flag comes in. And this is the type of play that we have to get out. I mean, Dio Williams, is. there's no reason for that. You can separate a player from a ball with a hard hit within the confines of the rules. And this is a defenseless player. On a defense, number 41, 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. Right, he's going to do everything wrong. He's going to launch with the crown of his helmet to the face mask of Jimmy Graham, and it's just, it, it's its not needed in this game. We have seen time and time again safeties that deliver a message within the confines of the rule with the shoulder in the chest area that result in the same impact. There has to be a mutual respect for the safety of these players, and these hits have to stop. 
And he's still out there, Jimmy Graham. You see him in the huddle right there, number 80 at the top of your screen. Right here after taking that shot. He doesn't want to give anybody the satisfaction. Well, Graham remains in the game. First and 10 from the Redskins, 36. As Brees finds more once again for another Saints first down of the Redskins, 19. I'll tell you what, now the pressure continues on Drew Brees. That defensive line is just, I don't know what they're doing, but they are, they, they totally dominated this offensive line of the Saints. Just rushing four right here, too. Look at the pocket closed down. Brees dumps it off to Sproles. And Sproles gets knocked out inside the one. John Combs down on his knees. He's had a heck of a game. Now this would be a, this would be a, a big loss for the Redskins. Number one, how well he's played today, but they are so they are so far down the depth chart at their safety position. So this low hit from Joseph Morgan. John Gomes made the start today for the injured Brandon Merriweather. Earlier in this quarter, his first career pick, which set up the Redskins' last touchdown. Tell you what, New Orleans offense got down the field pretty quick here. It did. First and goal from the two. I think this drive started right around 3.33. And the Not Saints goose. The Saints with two timeouts remaining, plus the two-minute warning. Balls in the backfield, three wide receivers. First and goal from the two, and Breeze had that pass knocked down by Arakpo. A little hot throw here to the left. Arakpo goes and reads it, gets up, gets his body nice and big, tips the ball, no chance. Second and goal with 2.38 on the clock. And another one gets batted back by Arakpo. Two in a row. Number 98. You know you're not going to get there. And that's a great feel right there. You know, that's a defensive end reading the quarterback's eyes as Drew Brees is drifting out to the left because he wants to get the ball to Darren Sproles out in the flat. He kind of mirrors his movement and slides with him, and then as he elevates, he's able to block it. If he'd have stayed where he was, I think he's going to be able to sneak that by him, but he's kind of like playing zone defense in basketball. Now third and goal from the two. Raise incomplete. He was looking for Jimmy Graham. This looked like the exact same play they tried to do last time, but now they're going to come back to the right side and try and find Jimmy Graham, number 80. He's just going to go down and pivot in, and now you've got your, your mismatch by height with Jimmy Graham, but they've got him double teamed. Saints scored on fourth down on their last possession. Fourth and goal, a pump fake. Now he throws, and Stoles takes it in for a Saints touchdown. Tough plays for Perry Riley to be in that situation, man-to-man -man on Darren Sproles, and he's got a two-way go. Two of the guys that Tony's been talking about in this possession kind of feature Jimmy Graham, and then you've got, you know, out of the backfield, and it's in, <laughs> it's in and out, and Perry Riley, that's a lot to ask from a middle linebacker. So now... The Saints, with the hardly extra point, go back to within eight. With 2.25 remaining. Following the third touchdown pass of the day by Drew Brees. And I want to see, you know, where San Francisco is at this year. I mean, what a great season they had last year. Overtime loss to the Giants in the NFC Championship game. 
And, you know, have they taken that next step? You know, the additions that they have out there at the wide receiver position, uh, you know, do they get away from that style? Because I think sometimes teams bring in players that add a dimension to your offense and you get away from what made you successful. I hope I don't see the Saints come out and line up in an onside kick formation, Kenny. Well, they, have time. Yep, they have two timeouts and a two-minute warning. So Aaron Kromer now the man in charge of making these decisions. Well, you got Thomas Morstead kicking off. You know he's going he's gonna to kick at three. You're going to get a touchback. You got two timeouts and the two-minute warning with no time taken off the clock on the deep kick. You're right. Morstead set a league record for touchbacks last season. So with 2.25 remaining, it's an eight-point Redskins lead as Morstead kicks it deep. Banks will not have an opportunity for a return, so no time off the clock as Robert Griffin III leads the Redskins offense back out, leading by eight. No rookie quarterback has led his team to at least 40 points in the last 62 years. Redskins have scored 10 in every quarter. Smith as a pass rusher down here on the bottom takes on the double team fights through that as the tight end releases up the field that's good run defense well they got to stop him on this series right here so Will Smith who had his suspension vacated on Friday returned to the club makes the tackle for a loss of three down at 13. over 300 yards in his NFL debut. Here's Mike Shanahan's guy that he told us about in our meeting on Friday. Logan Paulson, he's uh, he's not fast enough. Um, he's not quick enough. But he but catches tell you what, he, he just keeps making plays. <laughs> Some old school two hands on the ball. Churn in the legs. The old bulldozer you pull out of the barn and it just keeps running, right, Darrell? The third string uh, tight end, Redskins release Chris Cooley, although they do plan to speak with Cooley, have some conversations this week. Paulson caught 11 passes a year ago. A huge first down. Saints use their final timeout. I love the aggressive play call on second down. Don't wait till third down when everybody knows you're going to throw. Good call on second down by the Redskins. Here's Morris. And with the Saints... Out of timeouts. This will take us to the two-minute warning here in New Orleans. Redskins lead by eight. Second and 12. When we come back, with Drew Brees and the Saints trailing by eight. Throw for 320 yards. He's run for 42. Redskins with an eight-point lead. Second and 10. From the 49, the handoff to the fullback, Darrell Young. Saints with no timeouts. Redskins will let the clock run down as we check in for a game break with Patrick. Michael Vick and the Eagles avoid disaster in Cleveland. Vick already with four picks. He hits Clay Harbor. That would be the game-winning touchdown. Final score, Eagles over the Browns, 17-16. Kenny Moose. Thanks, Patrick. So the NFC East, Cowboys with a win over the Giants. On Wednesday, Eagles beat the Browns, and now the Redskins try to hang on. Sit up. Manning. Manning. Third down at 10. Redskins.
Redskins will play it safe with Morris. Now they will let the clock run down to approximately the 31 second mark. Giving the Saints one last chance. So Robert Griffin the third in his NFL debut here on kickoff weekend. Only Cam Newton has passed for more yards among rookies in a season opener. Cam, of course, doing it last year for Carolina. Now the Redskins will use a timeout time prior to the punt. Washington. That's our so second Cam Newton Darrell with 422 passing yards in the season opener. Peyton Manning threw for 302 in his debut in 98. So among rookies all time in the season opener, Griffin at number two. Yeah, and we saw the difference that Cam Newton made for the Carolina Panthers last year. You know, took an offense from 2010 that was very, very pedestrian in what they were doing and, and made them the most explosive offense in the league last year in 2011. But you have to temper all that because there's going to be a lot of excitement in Washington. And it is great a season as Cam had. I mean, he became the all-time leader in passing yards as a rookie, the all-time leader in total touchdowns in a rookie season. But he took him from 2-14 and 14 to 6-10. and 10. So, you know, th this is going to be the battle that Washington will have to fight during the course of the season. Rocket keeps it out of the hands of Strolls. So with 22 seconds remaining, Breeze and the Saints must go 80 yards and then convert on a two-point conversion. Saints are out of timeouts. Redskins are out of timeouts. And what becomes the play of the day right now? Really, I mean, you got to look at that Logan Paulson pass on second and 13. The second play of that drive. Otherwise, at 2.25 with two timeouts and the two-minute warning back, the Saints could have gotten the ball back just inside the two-minute warning. But that play was able to allow them to milk the clock all the way down to 22 seconds. So here's Breeze on first down. And Lance Moore makes the catch for a gain of 16. Down to 16 seconds on the clock. He's trying to get into a position where you can maybe get a Hail Mary pass into the end zone from a distance standpoint. And then hopefully you can get Jimmy Graham down there. He can go up and get it for you. 16 seconds remaining. Breeze fires. It's Lance Moore again. But the Saints are out of timeouts. They have to hurry downfield. Down to five seconds. Three seconds. Excellent. That is excellent. That is so impressive to watch. I mean, you've got all 11 guys dialed in on the same page. Your big guys up front. Everybody gets down the field, gets in a proper formation. There they go. Look at him. Drew Brees is already. <laughs> he's halfway down the field right now, getting his guys down there. Saints 39 yards away. Right. Two seconds remaining. Here's Jimmy Graham at the top of the triangle. Three Redskins drop back deep. As Breeze will air it out. And it comes down in the arms of Reed Dowdy. Clinching this kickoff weekend victory for the Washington Redskins. The defeat the New Orleans Saints 40 to 32. America's game of the week after these messages.